Hey, what's up, listener? Thank you for pressing play. This week on the Jock and Nerd podcast, we geek out over the Marvel big game spots for the upcoming Disney Plus shows and Black Widow. Anthony gives us a rundown on what it's like to be at the Super Bowl, and Sam Raimi is in talks to direct a Marvel movie. Geerific! Plus, a listener-sponsored movie review of the 80s cult classic revenge flick, The Wraith, and more, all in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Thursday, February 6th. 2020. This is Jason Mewes, and for reasons best left between you and your therapist, you're listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Snooch to the nooch. Check. Check one. All right. This is really fans out there. Let's give it up. Jock and Nerd. You're funny. Disturbing. Hello, how's it going, listener? And welcome to the Jock and Nerd Podcast, where we give you comic book and superhero TV and a movie news reviews and whatever we choose Jockey nerd my name is imran my name is anthony he's the chuck he's the nerd and over there in the corner that flatulent felty in the darkness uh that's rug boy what's up rugs call me rughead <laughs> oh you are are you you are related to you are a long lost howard brother there's ron howard there's clint howard and there's rug boy and i will say you do bear a striking resemblance to clint howard what do you think yeah. <laughs> You ever see Little Nicky where he's rubbing his nipples? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I look like. <laughs> you guys have... Oh, shit. You guys have, you have the same teeth. Pretty much. I just got a little bit more than I do. <laughs> Long lost Howard brother, Ruggs. Uh, Anthony, uh, thanks for coming back from the Super Bowl. I'm here. I'm sure. Did you want to stay in Miami? Would you have stayed there? Can you see yourself living there? Oh, no. No, no, no never. No. I mean, well, maybe, but it's too much. There's a lot of temptation out there. So it's like a Vegas deal. Then. What are you worried about? <laughs> I don't like hurricanes, and I, I think they get them occasionally. Well, temptation. Like, are you worried about? Aren't you a free man? Or I don't yeah, know. but the but the money the money adds up out there. It's a very expensive place. Oh, uh, all the things I like out there are expensive. So you've been to New York, you've been to Vegas, you've been to Miami. How expensive is it on that scale? Oh, uh, I don't know about cost of living, but. If you're on South Beach, it's on the same level as as Vegas. Oh, jeez, for sure. I mean, mm. Both of those are more expensive than New York, as far as partying. Hmm. But you can live in a, a half hour outside of there, and and it's dirt cheap. Yeah. Yeah, Miami's cool. I like Miami. All right. Well, listen, we will find out more about your Super Bowl experience, but before we do that, we got to talk about all the crazy shit we saw during the Super Bowl in the geek news. Let's get to it. The Jock and Ned Podcast. I mean, the big oh, shit. moment for me was Marvel's big game spot where we actually finally got to see footage from the upcoming Disney Plus shows. Geek Boner. Uh, now, it is a 30-second spot. A lot of just quick images of uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. One yeah, you got to slow it down. Yeah, you got to go frame by frame. And a little tiny bit of Loki. A little drop at the end. Uh, what did you guys think? What stood out to you? Uh, I had a huge... Geek moment. I was like, oh, shit. They're showing us shit. I thought it looked pretty good. What did you guys think? Anthony, what did you think? Everything looked good. Well, the first thing I thought was, oh, this looks very well produced, which yeah. I had feeling Marvel would, would go go big on this, but I wasn't entirely sure until I saw this. Looks movie quality. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It looks movie quality. Everything looks good. Nothing necessarily stood out to me, um, but I, some of my friends that I was with at the Super Bowl watched it with me, and the thing they noticed that was jarring to them is yeah. they went, I don't know what the fuck this WandaVision shit yeah, is about. This, What's going on here? Oh my God. Some of them were even like, they weren't like necessarily excited by it. They were going, this looks weird. What that, is this? That, to me, I thought that was the most interesting stuff. Rugs, what did you take away from this 30-second spot? I mean, Sam throwing the shield, practicing in the woods. That's pretty cool. 
I thought that was interesting. And yeah, as Anthony said, that looked movie quality. So I was like, okay, yeah, it looks good. And then WandaVision, uh, you know, I, I think it's a step down from movie quality from what it looked like, but had Wanda in the suit. In yes, the, yes. In, a, in a, like a Halloween costume yeah. gag or whatever. Yeah, it kind of does look like a little Halloween costume, but that's what that suit yeah. kind of looks like. And uh, there's, there's definitely throwbacks to like Leave it to Beaver and like uh, that 70s show and Absolutely. the Brady Bunch so and all these other things. Let's go show by show. Let's start by, with WandaVision. I loved you see the sitcom inspirations from the 50s to the 90s. The black and white stuff looking like I Love Lucy or Leave it to Beaver, like you said, or a little Dick Van Dykey uh, kind of thing where they're getting married. And then clearly those are the steps to the Brady Bunch house when you see her. And it also kind of looks like that 70s show. Uh, and then the 80s stuff, the most revealing thing here is that there's two little bassinets. There's pacifiers flying in the air. Will there be the twins? What are the twins? Wiccan and Speed, I believe, Yeah, are her children. But like... I didh- didn't even notice that. That could be a backdoor to New Avengers, maybe. Yes, the Young Avengers. Yes, if you look in the in the 80s scene, which that house reminds me of like Family Ties a little bit, you know? Uh, and so I love the 80s reference. But yeah, in the, you see pacifiers fly in the air, and there's two little cribs there. Hmm. And how does this work? How, he so look, we saw Vision and Ultron. He's smooth. He doesn't have a piece. Oh shit! Uh, is this? Maybe, I mean, maybe this. None of this is real. But well, she can warp reality to be whatever she wants. She can. That, cre- that's that's where I'm going with it. Is yeah. it's all her reality just getting fucked up over and over and over again? She's trying to like uh, center herself, and then you see like uh, where she's got the big hair and the flannel looks a lot like the Roseanne house. Uh, or married with children. There's just tons of uh, TV shows that they're they're biting from here, and uh, th- that looks the most interesting. I don't know what, but you're right. As to what this show is about, I have no idea. Is this something she's creating? Um, you know, it's going to lead into the uh, the Doctor Strange multiverse movie. Is this the beginning of the multiverse, or she's messing with it, or what is going on? How is Vision back? I think it's just a projection of her imagination. It's that yeah. simple. I agree. I don't. I don't know if Vision is actually back, but we'll see. We'll see. And then the it does look good. I, 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 I will agree. Actually, with Rug Boy, the the WandaVision stuff looked maybe a step down, but that's maybe that's on purpose. Well, they're trying to yeah. look like television, like right. sitcoms. So you right, know, right, right. And whereas the Falcon, you see him flying. You see some aerial shots. You see like a Super Bowl where uh, U.S. agents high fiving the dude. And they all have like A's on them, the 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 uh, people at the Super Bowl. So it's like some Avengers. U.S. agent is a bad guy in the comics, right? Yes. Yes. OK. Well, it's the government's pick for the next Captain America and they're right, going to control right, right. him. And I'm sure because we saw Sam get the shield and now he has maybe it's not the same shield. Maybe it's the same shield. I don't know. They could have. There, isn't there a second one? Didn't somebody make a second one? A second shield? Yeah. I don't know about that. No. There's been more than one shield. There's more than one shield. Yeah. And then at the very end, you see Loki in a blank black void and in in looks like a prison jumpsuit with a logo on it. And he's just like, I'm going to burn this whole place down. Oh, like, oh, shit. Uh, the logo, it says TVA on his jumpsuit. Um, possible reference to something called the Time Variance Authority. Which in Marvel Universe is the, is the guys that protect the timeline. A lot mm. like uh, Legends of Tomorrow has uh, the Time Bureau. It's the Time Bureau. Hmm. But the TVA created back in 1986 by Walt Simonson and Sal Buscema. Um, and I think they tangle with Kang a lot. So I was like, oh, shit. Will they bring Kang? Yeah. Could we see Kang? It's going to be Loki time traveling, hmm. messing things up. I don't through- know if it'll be this soon, but they could yeah. maybe hint at something. I mean, I would love to see him go through like like a Forrest Gump, like go through history and mm. and instead of saving things, like he's the reason presidents things happen got yeah. assassinated and bad things happen. You can have a lot of fun with uh, an alternate version of Loki traveling around for sure. And so this is the 2012 Loki. This is you know not the Loki, not the reformed Loki, not the not the reformed yeah. Loki. That did he die? Is he still alive? He's dead. He's dead. Th- right. Thanos killed him. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. He crushed him right in the beginning. Yes. Uh, not the reform. This is still the uh, mischievous Loki. Evil Loki. Evil Loki. Joining the cast of Loki. Did you guys see this? Owen Wilson. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, well. <laughs> Good old crooked nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows this, the noisy man. Loki, you're causing problems. Wow. <laughs> wow. How did you do that? Wow. Yeah. That Owen Wilson. 
will be joining Loki. So that's a pretty big get, I guess. He's a big, he's a big uh, movie star. Ish. Hans is so hot right now. <laughs> well, um, also we had uh, Bob Iger uh, in a Disney earnings call reveal more things about when these shows are coming out. Uh, so check this out. Here's the schedule for the the rest of this year, 2020. There's a lot of shit happening. Black Widow comes out in May. Falcon and Winter Soldier, six episodes in August on Disney+. Plus. Mandalorian Season 2, eight episodes in October. The Eternals comes out in the theaters in November. And another six episodes of WandaVision in December. Yeah. <laughs> well, I heard that they did this trailer, I think partly because of the Super Bowl, obviously, but they also needed some sort of extra momentum because of that Obi-Wan Kenobi show isn't going to happen or it's been uh, delayed. Yeah, it's been delayed when, and Ewan McGregor says it's still happening and uh, they just probably, it's probably got pushed back. So yeah, so they need some momentum here uh, with, uh, with to keep the Disney plus subscribers. I really don't up. understand how they didn't have like a flagship show running right after Mandalorian was over. They should like they, keep it yes. going at least a couple of weeks after the Mandalorian. Was there was over. some speculation I was reading on a website called the ringer.com. They were yeah. talking about Disney plus and sort of that thing of the keeping the momentum going. And there was two conclusions that this writer came up with. It was either, especially regarding star Wars, it was either Kathleen Kennedy is messing again with the stuff. Oh shit. Okay. She's meddling again in, in people's work yeah. or, they're actually taking their time with this shit and just not, not and going. Let's just not just throw anything out, just to throw it out there. Let's make sure that at least there's some quality to this stuff that we're going to throw out. I just feel like it's a little bit weird that this is the plan to just like have one show, one big show, and then nothing, and then like kind of quiet. Yeah, they were releasing new episodes of like that encore show and a couple of the other originals, but all of that has kind of stopped. They just put out Toy Story Four mm. um, is now available. And uh, they had also put out uh, the live action Aladdin uh, on Disney Plus. But yeah, they should they should do a little bit like HBO does and string some shit together. The DC Universe is kind of good at that. They overlap and they've been yeah, stringing as stuff soon as together. A show goes off of yeah. HBO. They got something else right in its place. Too too bad no one has it. Yes, too bad <laughs> it's gonna get shit canned and absorbed into HBO Max. Uh, Iger also said they want to spin off a lot of the Mandalorian characters. So I still think their Star Wars plan. Just, yeah, he did say that. I don't. I don't know. I don't know who would you spin off. Who would you spin off? What? Where are you going with that? Amy Sedaris and Baby Yoda just hanging out for a whole season. You want to see that? Anybody want to see the, that? Well, the the key. I thought about the Mandalorian. The key to what made that so good wasn't necessarily the plot. The plot was fairly straightforward. It was the fact that it was just so well made. Yeah. Like, so well crafted. Yeah. Did you? So know- there wasn't any other like what character besides the Mandalorian were you going? I'd want to see a spin off him. Yeah, no, I don't know. Bill Burr's fucking character. Bill Burr? (laughs) Just doing a comedy bit as an alien? Yeah, just him walking around (laughs) shitting on things. Or the robot that died twice? Like, those are the two characters. Yeah, that's good. There's fucking spaceship over here. What a piece of junk. What about what about uh, uh, Gina Carano? I'm out on Uh, Gina. We don't need a whole fucking show about Gina Carano. But they will probably do a show around her because it's a woman. And she people was popular. Clamor- yeah, people are clamoring for it, I guess. I mean, I heard rumors that they were for the uh, Obi-Wan show. They were looking at uh, casting a young like Leia and Luke. And I was like, oh, shit, that's, Geek that's not a bad idea. We get like a teenage Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia. Is it, though? Uh, I just saw Maybe. how Solo we, went. Yeah, I thought Solo was good, but they clearly casted a guy that couldn't fill Harrison Ford's shoes. Yeah, but this is Mark Hamill. I think it's a little bit easier to find Mark Hamill's shoes. He's really whiny in the first movie. Just yeah. find a fucking whiny kid. Did you also know in The Mandalorian, the way they shot that, it was none of that was shot outside. There was a giant wraparound screen that they projected all the outdoor landscape shit, wow. and everything was mostly shot on a set, and it's like this high-end fucking projection screen. It looked amazing. Wow, I, I thought it was on set. Yeah, I never would have guessed what? that it, none of that. What? Is that a real one? Get the okay, fuck well, out of here. There you go. I never there would have guessed that none of that was outside. They just had this Shut fucking... Up. Perc- look it up. None There's, of that. None of that's lo- done anywhere on location. All that like outside snow in that first episode where he gets the guy and it's like all snowy. That's all projection screen. Really? And they, yes, and they managed to make that's it look... That's the best goddamn the projection ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah this I is, did not know this that. This is some new fucking technology. Leave it to them to fucking... This is where all the money went. Wow. Just shoot it. Just go to a place where there's snow already. 
Yeah, it but you know what? Money. It's a lot cheaper probably yeah, to do expensive. it this way and yeah. keep everything and you can control it, it more. Yeah, yeah well, more you got to fly there and then you got to find either fly the crew or find a local crew out there. Yeah, you got to set up a whole lot more thing. work. None of that. That was all on set with a screen, which I thought was amazing. Uh, nice. The other interesting thing Iger announced is some numbers, Yeah, uh, which I thought was very interesting because Netflix rarely releases numbers. But since their launch, November 12th, so it's been like two and a half months. They have reached 28.6 million Disney Plus subscribers. Oh, shit. Hulu hits 3.4 million. 30. 30. Oh, 30. Sorry. 30.4 <laughs> million. Uh, and ESPN hit what, Anthony? What was that number? Oh, shit. What did was I it say? Like seven? Six or seven? Yeah. Six. Disney Plus, or ESPN was like six or seven. Wow. Um, and they were buoyed by the fact that they just had a Conor McGregor fight. Oh, which that's added right. another 500,000 subscribers in one day. Holy shit. Um, but Disney was helped by the fact of um, not only the Mandalorian, but the bundling. That helped a lot, too. Well, and then they also said a, a majority of those subscribers are the free Verizon people. Right. So, it, it you know, where are they going to stick around after their free year? But that's a pretty fucking good start for uh, a, a major streaming service. Of course, Netflix... Over 150 million subscribers. Yeah, that's what the the number. That's who they gotta they gotta catch up to. But they got great numbers. But they, now they need to start pumping stuff out. Now they got to keep the momentum going. Yeah, they got to make it worth worth your while. Because people can turn on this shit so fast. It it is a very impressive start. Um, I think it's the most impressive out of anyone that's released a. Uh, you know, since Hulu, Netflix, that's released yeah. a, a streaming. So I mean, it's Disney from zero to twenty-eight million in just a matter of like two months is yeah. is is crazy. Uh, he also announced that there are seven other Marvel series in various stages of development or pre-production, which Whoa. which is odd because the only five of them we know about. The five is She Hulk, Hawkeye, Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, and the uh, animated What If series. Right, leaving two more slots. I so I think I heard doing? I've heard that it's going to be either um, some kind of documentary series. Oh, like a Marvel documentary series. They were. Yeah, they did mention that about uh, Marvel and history. I'd be down with that if they go through the history of the comics and the company, like through well, the decades. I, I think you're talking about how Marvel and social issues. Like they're trying to go that whole angle. Okay. About okay. Marvel being this like woke company. Got it. That's been there for everything. You know. So they're gonna take a bunch of stuff and like. I mean, they have to their to their you know credit. It's true. You could tie yeah. a lot of uh, historical things to characters coming out at the same time. Yeah, it's true. But um, then the uh, other thing that I've heard is that they might do like uh, Ghost Rider or something like that, or another horror based thing. Yeah. Or hmm, who else? Anthony, who would you want to see? What do you think? Uh, what show? Put on, put on Netflix. Yeah. Or Disney Plus, uh, or sorry, sorry, not Netflix. Disney Plus. I like Daredevil, but obviously we just saw that, and I don't want to see that rebooted necessarily. Mm, so, mm -hmm. uh, man, I really can't think of anyone off the top of my head. I, I'd rather be surprised. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I think it's going to be like a teen thing. Yeah, like, like a, Runaways. Like either, yeah, young Avengers. Could, yeah, oh, yeah, Young Avengers. Yeah, you yeah. could do Young Avengers. Something like a teen, a teeny thing. You got a lot of young uh, Avengers around now, and they're All introducing this other more. All this stuff skews a little bit older. Yeah, they need like a teeny night. Yeah, like Miss Marvel's a y y younger yes. one. Yes, that'll be Hawkeye. Could be geared towards yeah, whatever. But I don't know. Maybe um, maybe a villain thing. Cool. Not you know, not just Loki, but something else. I can't Doctor think of Doom. Too, I think too big for Netflix. Or, sorry, I mean Disney they're Plus? they're introducing new characters in these shows, so there's no reason. That you know, you, it can't be like a bad guy that they're gonna build up. Young Magneto. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, do you bring in an X Men? Do you do X Men show? A Wolverine show? No, too soon. No, too soon. Anyways, they will be surprising us with more uh, announcements soon. Probably power pack. Probably at uh, San Diego this year. So, listener, let us know what you want. What do you think these two shows are? Join our Facebook group, Jock and Nerd Nation. Uh, it's a great place to hang out on the internet and geek out and not be judged. And uh, there's no assholes there. Everyone's very cool. Well, and, <laughs> no, no, everyone's, everyone's mostly 
Um, floppy jock. They're not floppy jock. They're mostly good. <laughs> floppy jock. Listen, we have an, an incredible admin in John Bellotti Jr. who vets everyone. He's a vetter. He's a vetter. He, you will not get past him. He will Eddie Vetter the fuck out of you. You're going to have to fucking fight him like the Black Knight on the bridge. That's right. Answer the questions. Moving on, another, <laughs> another. <laughs> questions three. You want to these, pass. What is the capital of Abyssinia? What? <laughs> what is your favorite color? <laughs> what? How heavy is a European swallow? African swallow? European swallow? <laughs> Oh, what is boy. the airspeed? <laughs> Just random science questions. Is the <laughs> Earth flat? Yes or no? Monty the, Python references. Yes, Monty Python's the best. That's what we should be at, making sure people answer the question. Is the Earth flat? That's what Bellotti is doing, though. Yeah. He's just asking them to answer the questions. I and if he, a new if general they direction. They just chop an armor. Yeah, he's getting them off. Um, another uh, big game <laughs> spot from Marvel. So, anyways, I think that 30 second spot was worth the $5.6 million, I suppose. <laughs> I, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know? Yeah, I guess. They I mean, I, it's, maybe it's a drop in the bucket for they Marvel. They showed at this us point. some new shit. I was like, that's worth $5 million. They spent Insane. another $5 million with a 30 second Black Widow spot that has a little bit of new footage. Mostly recycled footage in the first half, but in the second half, uh, you get to see some new things. Uh, you get to see Taskmaster pull uh, the fucking Captain America move with the shield. You notice yeah. that? Yeah. Flips it up and catches it. I also notice if you look at his hands real closely, he seems to have like Black Panther claws coming out of his fingertips. Wow. Look so at you. I think slowly you're starting to see all of the moves that he has studied and copied. Um, and then. The sick shot of Natasha jumping out of an exploding window building, uh, ripped right out of a comic book. Uh, any thoughts on uh, Black Widow? Did we? Are you, are, you, are you getting more excited? Was this floppy jock geek boner this one? No, I feel like it's going to be solid. I, I think with Chad Stahelski, John Wick, Chad John Wick Stahelski helping with. Uh, oh no, that's the other movie. Sorry, that's Birds of Prey. <laughs> Somebody is helping with these action scenes though too. I forget who that was. I would say it looks, as Rug Boy said, it looks solid. Um, it was a well cut thirty second spot at the end with the with Black Widow jumping out the window, and then the the I guess money shot of her and her uh, understudy, the girl in all white, yeah. just slowly turning around. I was like, ooh, there, that's that's nice. That makes me feel nice. Like these movies, I clean are myself not- off. <laughs> These are about people, like regular people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The, the, yeah. This is not like super, super powered people that are like Thanos and shit. This is like highly uh, trained scaled, people. Scaled down Skilled. like ninjas yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Basically, spies and ninjas. And, yeah. So you, my expectations are smaller. They just, it basically has to be like a John Wick movie or, or for you know, comparison to something like that. Or like a James Bond or a Jason Bourne type of yeah. action. So, yes. Or yeah, something like that shit. So I still don't think that she's done after this movie. It just seems so strange that Scarlett Johansson, Natasha Romanoff will be done. Could my question is, what if this was one theory I saw? What if all of this is happening in the Soul Stone, and at the end of the movie they reveal, oh, she was revisiting her past and she's not dead and she got out of the Soul Stone? Oh shit. That'd be the worst idea I've ever Bad? heard. No, you know, like, you, that would be a com- that would literally make it the word the the movie was a complete waste of your time. <laughs> That's true. Oh, and I don't like when they do that. That's like it's all, it a, was dream. all a dream. It yeah. was all a dream. No, that's fucking stupid. Don't do that. Don't that's do that. Point. All right. Well, look. Yeah, they have a time machine. Yes. They, know how they can they can do stuff. So speaking of that, rugs. Here's another theory I saw. Ready? Forget about that. I'm what. Everybody forgot about the time machine, the big particles, the yes. fucking all that shit. Okay, so like, yes. Th- there's always back doors through, through all the shit. So, also, if you notice, in some of these spots, she is holding small vials with red substance in them. Are these pin particles? I think that's the black, some sort of black widow. Serum. Serum. So, the other theory would be, is Taskmaster her... From a different timeline. I think it's mm. just jello shots. Oh, they are just jello shots. Interesting way to administer those jello shots. Did you ever get the vials of, of, of shots in the bars where they came with the. I don't know if I've ever the, done the. I may, actually, I have done the vial. Yeah, where the girl walks around with the fucking test tubes I and shit. I did it in New Orleans once. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was the thing. Well, I was going to say New Orleans. You, also, you buy those fucking. Vodka. I got the. Well, yeah, I was going to say New Orleans. I got the, the, gummy the bears. vial of 
shot. Then yeah. I, my, I got my ass spanked, and then I got involuntarily uh, did a motorboat uh, <laughs> on the girl. Bell. I was pulled into doing a motorboat. <laughs> she did. She did all the movement. My face was. You still. just stood there. Yeah. It was a passive motorboat. Yeah, it's, they're really aggressive in New Orleans. Those shot they, girls. They are. They're like hair. Drink this. Yeah. Yeah. The same. The same in Florida as well. Oh yes. Also, we had a frozen drink there called the Voodoo, and it was just purple. Blue? Oh, purple. yeah. I'm like, what? It, what flavor is this? And they're like purple. And so I don't know what it was. Got my tongue purple. It was yummy. Uh, then you proceeded yeah. to have diabetes. Then I had diabetes. <laughs> you drink the fucking fishbowl full of a hurricane with a strap around it. So unnecessary. Why do they sell that? It's unbelievable. Uh, and then gummy bears soaked in vodka for five it's bucks like at the French fry shop. Diabetes and herpes at the same <laughs> and time. And then alcohol poisoning to close out the night. Uh, diabetes. Anyways, I can't wait to see uh, if this is, there's going to be time travel of what that fucking those vials are. Who the taskmaster is. So many guesses. Um, the other trailer I thought was kind of interesting uh, was this Mulan trailer. Disney continuing with their live action adaptation of everything they made to double dip and rule the universe. But this I thought was uh, this was like a crouching tiger, hidden dragon. Yeah, it looks like something that would come out of Asia. You know, oh, yeah, it looks like a legit like kung fu sword play. There's ninjas. There's no it's singing. Like Mongols in there. Yeah, dude, it looks fucking dope. There's it's no. Like they're doing their impression of those movies. It's like they're really, they're cloning it. Amazing. I mean, they're taking this real seriously instead of there's no, you know, Eddie Murphy singing Dragon. Uh, right. I, and I shit. read. Yeah, I read that. I haven't actually. Mulan was a little after my Disney Renaissance age, um, but I heard they really toned down the comical aspects of this movie. Yeah, this looks like because there, there was a dragon, right? Yeah, there was Eddie Murphy was a dragon. Oh, Mushu. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I mean, look, we see this at the Lion King and the other stuff. It's like when you try and do like a beat for beat recreation of the cartoon. It doesn't work. The cartoon's always better. Right. Yes. So you gotta go in a different direction slightly and maybe making it more serious could be how it distinguishes itself the, from the I other. I mean, one. the costumes look great, the action, the the scale of it. I was like, holy shit, this looks fucking cool. I did recently watch the live action Aladdin with Will Smith on Disney Plus. It, it was all right. It wasn't that bad. Like they did the same thing. Rugs. They had to change a few things because it's live action, and it was entertaining. It was fun. They're doing Bollywood dancing. But do you like the cartoon better? Oh, way better. One hundred percent. It's Robin that's Williams. What I, that's what I well, thought. This Mulan, actually, the movie was kind of before its time. It. I feel like it's more. It's going to hit more with audiences Absolutely. now because it, it being about a girl. In an all boy situation, Female, having, Asian yeah. American strong lead. I mean, dealing with her identity in the midst yeah. of a she's war. not even American; it's Asian, straight right. Chinese. Yeah. Chinese. Uh, yeah, dealing in a war and uh, and and or and, maybe no one will see it because of the coronavirus. Oh, <laughs> Jesus! That'd be really racist, wouldn't it? <laughs> you you can't get the coronavirus by watching Mulan, listener. Just let's put that <laughs> out there. We don't want to cause a panic. This movie will give you the coronavirus. Ron already had it. He's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing. Come on. The flu. It's one of everything he's ever had. Dude, the flu has killed more people yearly than the coronavirus. Yeah, I don't Imran is the, the Noah's Ark for diseases. Yeah. He's got two of each. I have everything, and they all just <laughs> they cancel each other out. It's just like they're trying to get through the door, and they all just get stuck. So if I cure one thing, everything's over. I have to continually uh, have all of them. <laughs> well, gotta catch them all. I got, got I'm a fucking Pokemon of diseases right here and viruses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you guys like any of the other commercials? The Jason Momoa commercial that was kind of funny. I didn't see them. Oh, so <laughs> there's a commercial where Momoa is walking into his house. He's like, "I love coming home and finally getting to relax." And he proceeds proceeds to take off his muscles, oh. off his arms and his chest, revealing a skinny like. Lanky, skinny body. Yeah, the CG was then, very bad. And then at the end, he takes his hair off, and he's like balding, and he's got. I long. think I saw a, a picture of him yeah. with his hair. Yeah, off. And then Boss Logic did a Aquaman poster. I of wasn't him. impressed. I, I thought it was it was a funny way to poke poke fun at yourself. I don't I, I don't know. I don't think any of the commercials were no. Anything they they great. weren't they weren't anything special. Anthony, how yes. was it being there? What was observations? What was it like? Uh, what do you, what do you want the the quick rundown or yeah? Well, how did you how did you end up there? Uh, and so I had a mutual friend. So I have some friends that go have gone to the Super Bowl now two years in a row, and this time they invited me. Oh wow! Okay, uh, because we have a friend, we have a mutual friend that works for the Dolphins. So oh fun! He was able to help us out with some tickets at 
uh, not what everyone else was paying them for. Paying well, for them. You know, I saw your fucking Instagram story with the ticket price on there. That's face value. Holy shit. That's not what you paid, is it? That is what I paid. Holy shit. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Nine hundred fifty dollars. Yes, <laughs> that's what I thought. I thought it'd be at least a grand. Yeah. The, well, the yeah. average resale price on these tickets was the highest it's been in years, which is what was around eight to nine grand. Holy wow. fuck! And those were the cheap tickets, the nine fifties. Yes, those were cheaper <laughs> tickets. Jesus Christ! Well, was it everything you uh, hoped it would be? Everything you expected? Uh, let me just give a quick rundown. Okay, for the yes. listener. Give us the timeline. Uh, so uh, my flight was at on Friday before the Super Bowl around eight p.m. I uh. Took a flight to Miami. It was one of the worst flights I've ever been on. Oh, no. We were about 20 minutes delayed, uh, but there were thunderstorms in Miami, so we were. I could see our flight path going around the storms oh, to come shit. in. Yeah. Um, but it was there was so much turbulence on the descent down that the normally the, the ladies clean up with the cart. They come over and they clean up everything. They were like, we're doing scouts on our system. Just stay buckled up. We're not coming <laughs> oh, around. Oh, shit. And literally... The, the plane is just rocking. There's people on the plane yelling like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Mind you, this is, you know, week after Kobe Bryant died. So everyone's a little wary about being yeah. on a plane. Yeah. If you look out the windows, you can see flashes of lightning. Like, <laughs> so that was fun. Um, <laughs> but we did land safely. Was it the landing where everyone applauds when you land? Yes. Okay. There was yeah. a big applause. And then yes. there was also encouragement from the stewards or the, what is it, the, the flight attendants yeah. to... Thank the pilots for getting us landing landing safely. Yeah, you um, did your job. Thank hey. you. So from there, uh, we landed. I went straight to the hotel, dropped my bag off, and met my friends out at a party. Yeah. At a, at a uh, Super Bowl party. Uh, Paris Hilton was spinning at this Super Bowl oh, party. Oh, yeah, I Shit. saw that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty hilarious. Got really messed up. Got really drunk. First time I've drank in a month. Um, got pretty drunk. Uh, didn't realize that there were copious amounts of... Uh, working girls in Miami uh-huh. got their numbers. <laughs> Didn't realize that they were working girls until they started asking me how how much, or uh, telling me that they're going to be paying that I'd, I'd have to pay. I still thought it, I was so drunk that I thought it was a joke and told them, "No, you'd have to pay for me." Oh. <laughs> uh, they did not appreciate that. <laughs> You're like, how am I getting all these numbers so quickly? This is great. <laughs> this is great. Saturday was kind of a bummer. It was a rainy day, mm. so we went to a pool party, but it was raining the entire time. So it was just ninety five percent dudes mm. <laughs> standing under under cover. Um, at night, we decided to try to go to the Rolling Stone party. Uh-huh. Uh, we snuck into it. There was nice. a little hole in security. Nice. It was normally three hundred dollars to get in. Oh shit! We got in for free because we snuck in, and nice. then it was free drinks all night. Damn! Um, some celebrities that were there were Paris Hilton again, uh, DJ Khaled, Sierra, Russell Wilson, Jeff Bezos, uh, oh, the owner shit. of Amazon. Fuck. So yeah, that was fun. And then uh, Sunday we went to the game. Uh, we got there about five hours prior to the game. Oh shit! Uh, and just. Walked around the stadium. There's a shit ton of things to do. Ate a lot of food. I was pretty hungover for the game, so I barely drank. And, uh, uh, mm. Yeah, it was a good game. Obviously, if you watched the game, it was, it was a really good game. Um, Chiefs won. I had no rooting interest, so I was literally there just hanging out, watching the game, enjoying everything. And Would I go again? Uh, I would not go to the Super Bowl again unless the Bears were in it. Okay. It's just way too expensive, yeah. but it is a cool uh, once in a lifetime. Yeah, it's thing. like a bucket list. It sounds thing. like besides the flight, everything in that rained out day it went pretty well. Went pretty well. Yeah, went pretty well. I did, I did have to take a red eye flight right after the Super Bowl. Oh so shit! Left the Super Bowl, went back to my buddy's place, got to my stuff, went on an airplane at two thirty in the morning. Oh wow! To Washington D.C. <laughs> oh no! Then stayed there for three hours oh, and then flew to Chicago in the middle but, of the night. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, but overall, it was, it was a very solid trip. Miami. I've been to Miami before, but. Miami is a South Beach, and as in, especially is a very uh, is. There's nothing like it. There's yeah. nothing like South Beach. The, the Art Deco hotels, the, the clothing people are wearing, the the amount the of lack of clothing, the <laughs> lack of clothing. Yeah, just the people, the the amount of money. It's just ridiculous. The food, Damn. good Cuban food, lots of stuff. So cool. Yeah. 
great, man. I'm glad you had a good time. But uh, yeah, once in a lifetime kind of thing. You gotta once in a lifetime. Yeah. Uh, the game, at least, it was interesting. I found that interesting. Good, I was like, game. holy yeah. shit! Look at him coming from behind. Uh, as far as the ratings, you know, we talk about everything's going to streaming. This is one of the last bastions of like live TV. Just under a hundred million viewers. Oh shit! Watching the Super a Bowl. A lot of people. I think it went up from last year. But yeah, I think you could also stream it like on Hulu Live or YouTube Live or one of the live. You things. can do it on YouTube or yeah, Hulu, so, yeah, YouTube or Sling, yeah. So like, but you have to do it. You can do it live. You have, you'd most likely watch it live. Yeah, and I mean, it was live streamed, I believe, on the YouTube. I saw a commercial, right. but uh, yeah, everybody, everybody watching, and uh, you know, halftime show is good. I didn't think oh it, yeah, I didn't think forgot to bad. mention halftime yeah. show was fantastic. I thought it was a great halftime show. Really, really entertaining live. A um, lot of high energy stuff felt. Unlike last year, my friends were complaining because last year they was in Atlanta, right? And for whatever god awful reason, they decided to put Maroon Five as the headliners in Atlanta. Yeah, which oh. makes no sense. Atlanta yeah. is like soul and yeah, and Atlanta's hip-hop. got a huge music scene. Yeah, and like blues and all that. And you decide to take two you sick a white band from L.A. and throw them there. Five. But like this one, Miami was. They chose Jennifer Lopez yes. and Shakira. Perfect. Had Bad Bunny and Jay Balvin come out, so it had the Latin flair. It felt more like Miami, so it felt appropriate to the. To the region. I mean, Shakira is my age, and oh, Jennifer oh, Lopez shit. is fifty. Jennifer Lopez fifty pole dancing. That shit is not easy. The athleticism they were showing us was uh, incredible. Uh, Rugs, what'd you think? Were you? Uh, did you? Uh, Floppy John. Geek boner. Well, uh, halftime show. What'd you think? I mean, they weren't singing, but uh, I for think the most I part. think they were singing though. I, th- I think sometimes they Shakira were. At, at was points singing, they were singing, but yeah. there's the the way they were moving at times. There's no way you can sing that. Yeah, well. yeah. You can't do that at the same time. But, but they, it was very entertaining. Shakira but played the was guitar a, listen, and the drums. I, I thought it was a fine. They did a fine job. Yeah, I wasn't like, eh, yeah, that was fine. Whatever, it was fine. Whatever. You, fun fact. <laughs> yeah. All the halftime performers throughout history, the NFL does not pay them. What? They do it for free. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, they do it for free because, one, it's, it's a honor. popular thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's an honor to do it. Two, it will jumpstart your career. Sure. Every every artist that's done it or most artists that have done it, albums, whether it's be album sales, yep. uh, downloads on Spotify, or tour sales have all spiked. Shakira's song show. from 19 years ago, number one again. They will both the probably go, either go on tour, release yeah. new songs, or release a whole album, and they'll do very well. She did announce a world tour just yep. last week. Exactly. Also, and it's, it's, it's the kickstart to doing all that stuff. She still got it, man. That belly dancing uh, was great. Weren't people really upset it was like too sexy? Did you guys see this? I saw some of the no, conservative stuff. No, that's just fucking pearl clutching bullshit. Listen, last year, uh, Adam Levine, shirtless, his pant literally is hanging off the top of his dick. Like, literally, it was almost there. There was nothing else holding it up. Nobody had a problem with that. What, because Jayla was on a pole? Dude, do you know how hard it is to pole dance, especially at her age? I mean, she wasn't even pole dancing. No, she was like, just, like, really, hanging on there. You know, she was like, pretty much hanging yeah. on there, yeah. Yeah, she just was doing, like, some acrobatic... I don't know. That's, like, pearl clutching to me. Like, I hate when conservatives pro clutch. I hate when liberals do it. Ugh. I hate when people like have fake outrage. It's like, how, you know, it's like the shit that your kids are seeing. Like, you're, I guarantee you, your kids are just watching and seeing shit that's way worse than that. <laughs> Absolutely. Like Cardi B, like any Cardi B video, anything with Cardi B on it is fucking, or you watch some of these, even these country fucking videos with the chicks in them. They're all fucking in their cowboy boots. Doing, we're in fucking next to nothing. So still nothing tops. Uh, Prince playing Purple Rain in the rain. Uh, I think one of the best performances in in the recent that Super Bowl cool. halftime. It was fucking amazing. It was so good. It's magical. Um. All right. Well, yeah. Good halftime show. Good. Good show. I had one square. I didn't win shit. I didn't win oh. any squares. No. I ate a square. You ate a square. <laughs> it was a Sicilian was it square. It was oh. amazing. From. Uh... <laughs> Let me get a square. I can't spare a square. LNDs in Brooklyn. Yes, very good. Uh, moving on. Big news announced this week. This has got me very excited. Got Geek a lot of people excited. We talked about how Scott Derrickson walked away from directing Doctor Strange oh, 2. yes. Well, apparently, motherfucking Sam Raimi oh, in talks to direct Doctor Strange 2. Uh, I am so much yes for this. This is uh, like this is now an established filmmaker. Uh, you know, s- jumping on, uh, becoming uh, an MCU director, 
a guy that undoubtedly started in the, you know, the 2000s, the wave of superhero movies with the Spider-Man trilogy. I don't see how there's anything bad with this. What do you guys think? What has Sam Raimi directed since not Spider-Man 3? much. Uh, he has not done many things. The last thing he did was um, that, that Oz movie. Oh, Oz that, the that, Great and Powerful with James Franco. And that didn't really do so well. No, it didn't. So he needs a good comeback movie. And I mean, I think, do you think he's too stylistic? I mean, this is an auteur stylish director. Can he work in the studio environment? Under, he must think so. He must think he can do it. First off, I'm I'm all in on this. I didn't even think Sam Raimi was right? an option. Right. Um, I, I think he's. I, I'm. Ex- I would. I would. This would make me excited to see Doctor Strange. Absolutely. You know, Sam Raimi, who not only did the Spider-Man movies, but his style in Evil Dead, um, mer- mer- merging kind of the comedy yep. with yep. the horror. I mean, yep. even in Spider-Man Two, that scene with Doc Ock in the hospital is yeah. very horror. Yeah. Uh, stylized so yeah i'm 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 a big fan of this and the way the variety article is written it makes it sound like it's almost a, it's done, a deal. done deal yeah yeah i mean he's gonna say rugs well i'm basically along the same lines as you i just don't think it's going to happen mm-hmm. I, I mean i don't know is sam Ra- i mean i'm all in on sam raimi i think he's a talented guy yes Spider-Man 3, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Spider-Man it's pronounced 3, Spider-Man. Um, Spider-Man universe. You know, is a, is a mark on his, you know. Yes, but that was entirely his fault, though. Pretty good run. Yeah. That is studio interference in him just, you know. Yeah, eh. I believe that. Um, but this is the thing. He's such a stylistic director. He does his things his own way. Yeah. Uh, it's it's very outside of the Marvel. Marvel's been trying to break away from what he did with Spider Man, and in, in a lot of ways. So to have him in there, he's gonna have to capitulate and kind of play nice. I mean, like it's in his best interest because if you become a part of Marvel family, they're gonna use you again as yep. long as you do as they say. But is he? Is he's too much set in his own ways? I think to to kind of come in and like. They're using all of these people who have never directed movies because they want to just, like, yeah, manhandle they them. They want to mold them. But you have the likes of James Gunn, a Ryan Coogler, a Taika Waititi, who, yes, they are. They don't have as many movies, but they also have a very distinct style. Yeah, but they never made million-dollar movies, yes. like, you know, multi-million-dollar Correct. movies before. Like, Correct. Sam Raimi was the franchise guy yeah. for, for Sony. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. It's kind of a throwback to when they were first started out making these films. Yes. Like, remember Thor had uh, Kenneth Branagh and, Brana. Brana. Yeah, yeah. Brana and uh, Captain America had James Johnson. J- yeah, Joe Johnson, James- like Joe es- Johnson, established sorry. filmmakers right. bringing them in. And I think they should, I like, I think uh, this may be a big turning point where they are ready to let guys come in and and trust them to do um, their style. I mean, I think with Benedict Cumberpatch and his humor and sensibility as Sam Raimi, this could be a killer fucking movie. I think it's a perfect marriage yeah. of director and property and property. It's like, it's got horror aspects. It's got a, you know, Dr. Strange is a smart aleck. Yep, you know? It's got the comedy. So it's all the things. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, that's Sam Raimi's weak point in Spider-Man is making Spider-Man funny. Right. Right. Like the kind of, I think that was weak yeah, in the yeah, Spider-Man yeah. character. It wasn't quippy at all. No, he yeah. wasn't. And the jokes were lame, but. I think that uh, that's the only thing I'm a little bit worried about. But I think they probably have it all written out. They probably have this thing on rails. They just need someone to do the you know, the visionary stuff. I, I, got a, uh, I just thought of this now. Yeah. Remember they had mentioned that part of the deal with the third Spider-Man is they'll have him appear in a Marvel film? Yeah. What if this is the film? Well, my, here's where my head went. You know, it's called Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. You got Sam Raimi. Can you bring in Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man? Not going to happen. And make the Spider-Verse. They, they do that make a crazy? Doctor Strange reference in the Raimi it, film. Yes, in Spider-Man 2, J.K. Simmons, who is again J. Jonah Jameson in this Sony weird oh, Marvel yeah, universe. I forgot about that. He's back to being J.J.J. If Ted Raimi is his assistant, then I'll buy Ted, Listen, you need to get <laughs> Ted Raimi. You get a cameo for Bruce Campbell in the movie. You got to have a Bruce Campbell. And you got to yeah. have uh, Sam Raimi's car in the movie. And like you have a great Sam Raimi Doctor Strange movie. I, I just think it would come full circle if they he got to play with Spider Man one more time. I think that would be great. I would love to see Spider Man in the Doctor Strange movie because they have a great relationship in the comics and Benedict Cumberpatch is just but great with is, everyone. This is the 
thing you got to understand. The guy who was supposed to direct this movie, Derrickson, yeah. Yeah. he already sat down and fucking mapped this whole movie out. Yeah, it's just, all pre yes. Yeah, It's all locked down. What does Raimi really have to do here? He's just got to say fucking He just has to sit there action. and just not let it get fucked just up. Just do it the way <laughs> we want it. But, but why, well, would, you, I don't why know. would you hire Raimi then? How much can you change at this point? Yeah. Also, Scott Derrickson did walk away due to creative differences. So, like, how's Raimi going to handle this? Or are they going to give him more leeway because it's fucking Sam Raimi? The only, the only mm. thing I would say is maybe if they bring in Raimi, they'd be more open to delaying the film. Yeah. But... On the flip side, they have WandaVision coming out, and yeah. they did say that WandaVision was supposed to lead into Doctor Dude, Strange. all this shit is going to tie together. So, like, so they're on a timeline. You know, and shit. Loki's going to tie in, and then Captain Marvel is going to tie in. The other, like, everything. They are on like, timeline. If you were Sam Raimi, would you want to do this maybe as a way to get into this Marvel's good graces so that you, you could start making these big movies again? Does he want that? I don't know. It's crazy. If if It depends on where he's at financially, right? Yeah. If I'm Sam Raimi, not knowing his finances, I'm going, I'll do Doctor Strange, but you got to let me do it my mostly way. My, my way. way. Mostly yeah. my way. Because, yeah. you know, I mean, obviously you can't walk into a Marvel film and go, I'm going to do it 100% my way. There's right. a larger universe. You yeah. can't do it. Yeah. I mean, that's the problem they had with, you know, Edgar Wright after years, a little. I, I don't see why you would hire Sam Raimi to yeah. just direct the yeah. film that you already figured out how you would do. And if it is in pre-production now, it's early enough that he can like take some of the things and then put his own stamp on some things. Raimi's smart. He'll figure it out. This will be a huge comeback for fucking Sam Raimi. It's, I, I, I was blown away that I, that this was even being talked. This is even being talked about. I'm very conflicted about this. I'm like, I'm in the bag from for Raimi. I just don't know if the situation is like, you know, like that situation would, Spider-Man 3, where the studio was in there, it didn't turn out good. No. Yeah. So I'm worried about that. Yeah. So, um, listen, Kevin Feige, it's good in good hands. He knows what he's doing. They've worked together before. Yes. Yeah. And I'm sure he's friends with a lot of people there. Uh, super exciting news. Get Sam Raimi to do whatever he wants. Just give it to him, Marvel. Um, and then last thing, by the time this show posts, you guys, Birds of Prey will be out in the theaters. The reviews just dropped. The Rotten Tomato score, it's out. The critics seem to really enjoy this movie. Uh, right now, oh, it went down a little bit. The tomato meter is sitting at 86% with 153 reviews. 6.89 out of 10 on the average rating. I mean, it started out at like 94%, but it has gone down. Uh, some people saying the best DC movie in the years. <laughs> So, which they say for You've every movie. You've never heard that before. Yeah. But I do feel like they're starting to figure things out. They've gotten a string of movies that have moved away from. Look, they figured out when they did the that uh, the first screening that they needed to get Chad Zaleski in there and just reshoot the action scene. Yeah, so back to the John Wick Chad Zaleski comment. I was talking about this movie. I'm looking forward to the action because if Stahelski <laughs> is involved, uh, you know, there's going to be some fucking sick gun food. But- Everybody that's seen this movie and gave it a rave review, they said that last action sequence is bonkers. It's so it's worth waiting for. It reminds me of John Wick. I'm like, oh, shit. Well, there's a reason. Oh, yeah, it reminds you of John Wick the guy. because the guy who directed John Wick fucking they hired him to fix the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's the guy from John Wick. What so, do you guys think this movie makes opening weekend? By the time the listener hears I'll, this, they'll know. I want to raise since it's getting like such good reviews. Yeah. It's probably going to make more money than I thought. So I'm going to say 120 at least. Whoa. Oh, opening three day weekend. Isn't it yeah. also a long weekend? Is there a holiday on Monday? No, nope. you're, you're no. incorrect. Just three day weekend. Uh, okay. <laughs> I will go 75 mil. Yeah, I was thinking like 60, 75. They were estimating $50 million opening. Uh, but I mean, they've like Deadpool open in February did huge. Black Panther opens in February does huge. Is this R? I forgot. It's a rated R movie, too. Okay. So it's going to be lots of adult stuff, and apparently Harley uh, Margot uh, steals Deadpool, the movie. I'm, 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 I'm tracking it on Deadpool. Deadpool made like $132 million opening Yeah, so weekend. I'm thinking it's 120 maybe 115 You know, Joker just opened to $93 million in October. So based on uh, character awareness, I feel like Harley Quinn and Margot Robbie have gotten huge. Uh, and uh, it could, uh, it yeah, it could be higher than 60 to 70. If it breaks $100 million, uh, that'll be interesting. 
Yeah. But uh, there is there is uh, a spoiler thread in the Facebook group, Birds of Prey, so you can go comment, spoil away, talk to people who've seen the movie. I'm not going to read any reviews. I'm going to try to go as cold turkey as I can. Yeah, I've, not, I've read some of the headlines. I haven't ever fully I'm read the reviews. Do so we'll see. I'm looking forward to it. Full spoiler review next week right here, listener. Live. Live. Recorded not. to live. Be there or be square. Okay, let's take a quick break for some promos before we review another obscure 80s cult classic for a Patreon listener right after this. After these messages, we'll be right back. Crisis for the geek kind. Top geek officials admit they underestimated the hipster's defense capability. Join the geek revolution and save the galaxy. Geeks from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. They're doing their part. Are you? Want to know more? Join We Be Geeks and the Geek Revolution and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. Listen to We Be Geeks podcast on iTunes and Stitcher or online at webegeeks.net. We Be Geeks, your voice for the geek revolution. Want to know more? Hi, everybody. I'm RJ Metzger. And I'm Rachel Metzger. And we're the Skeptical Skeptics. Each week, we talk about all the crazy things in the world, ranging from the paranormal to Bigfoot to UFOs. And we look at it from the perspective of the believer, the skeptic, and everything in between. So come check us out on the MSC Podcast Network. Or go to SkepticalSkeptics.com and follow us at SkepSkepPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Listener, if you love the show and you can't wait for every Sunday for a show to drop, join our fan club. We would appreciate it. Visit jockandnerd.com slash Patreon and you can support the show financially and get bonus exclusive content you can't get anywhere else. You'll get access to an RSS podcast feed with uh, post shows, early access to the shows, instant reactions. For example, this week we should have our instant reactions to Birds of Prey up for our Patreon supporters. So literally walking out of the theater or shortly thereafter. We'll give you our thoughts, and then uh, you'll get a full review next week. So that's a lot of fun. And Rugs, what happens if uh, they sign up for ten bucks a month? There, what happens? They can ask us to watch a movie, and we'll review it. That's Talking nerd. Absolutely correct. It's a fun tier. You can force us to watch anything you want, and we've discovered lots of gems and lots of shitty movies in this journey. <laughs> A long yeah, it's way. It's become a game, a sick game. It is. It's become a really twisted torture game. Uh, we're going to do another one right now. But if you want to join, sign up. We're almost done with round one. We'll be going through round two picks. Visit jockandnerd.com slash Patreon. This week's Patreon sponsored movie review is another obscure 80s cult classic called The Wraith. Here is your spoilers. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Prepare to be spoiled! <laughs> you had to, uh, from 1986 to watch this movie, listener. Don't say we tend to warn you. This one is sponsored by, dedicated to listener and Patreon supporter, Ray O'Neill. Yeah! <laughs> All righty then. Ray's the best. He's been a patron for 16 months. He is our number one fan in the 50th state. Do you guys know what that state is? Quiz? Oklahoma? I got Hawaii. Uh, Anthony Rugg, ah. Rug Boy, correct, oh, okay. is from Oklahoma. Is it, Look up Oklahoma. I think it's like 48th or 49th. Was it really one of the last mainland states? I believe so. In the middle of the country. Yeah, they just chopped Texas, uh, yeah, like, part of it, and made it. Like, we don't know what to do with this hole that's left in the middle. Yeah, just call it Oklahoma. Call it a day. Yeah. We give it a handle. Uh, but yeah, Ray's in Hawaii, and Ray always shares the show. 20, tw- oh, never mind. What Keep was going. it? What no, was I, it? I, I looked up 28th. I didn't even read the right stats, so <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Tell me what the 49th state was. But Ray, thanks for sharing the show on your Facebook. I always notice when you share the show when it comes out. We appreciate it. Everyone should be doing that. Uh, what's the 49th state, Danny? Anthony. Oklahoma was the 46th. Oh, you were close. You were close. Yeah. God damn it. What was the 49? Uh, what state is the 49th state? Alaska. Oh, Alaska, oh, of course. Shit. Okay, what yes. was the one before that? that? What's the last mainland state? 
48 was Arizona. Arizona. They're like, well, what do we do with this desert bit over here? We'll make uh-huh. some great ice. 47 was New Mexico. Oh, so that was the last. They're like, it's hot and there's really nothing here. I think it was all just Texas and they just split it up. And then the mob's like, hey, we'll take Nevada. Don't worry about it. I believe Oklahoma was one of the last it was all Mexico. Indian reservations. Oh. And then they decided to make it a state and take that away from the Indians. Uh, too. Of course. Ah, you fucking bastards. Sorry, they were here believe, first. Don't quote me on that, but I think that is the case. They were here first, and we gave them diseases and casinos. Sorry. Yeah, Col- Christopher Columbus was not a good person. <laughs> Did I ever read up his shit? Yeah, he was a horrible man. He was a horrible person. And he didn't discover shit. No, he just no. Uh, it was an accident. Not only that, he wasn't the first guy here. No. <laughs> he, did, but he wasn't even he the all, first he European. Yeah, white guy here. But the thing here. is, he also didn't just, like, come here and kill everyone. It was, like, it was over hundreds of years and yeah. all these different things that wiped out the Indians. It wasn't just, he just showed up, like, with, like, uh, a Gatling gun and just went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> From what I've read, he did kill a lot of people. No, he did. But, yeah. like, I think a lot of it was, like, disease, the spreading of disease right. and stuff like that. This right. is yeah. not the hardcore history podcast, yeah. listener. <laughs> I don't know yeah, why. he definitely oh. killed people. There's not even a question of that. Yeah. Sure, and he wasn't yeah. even the first European over. No, here. was probably no. wasn't the first European. He Gets wasn't. all the credit. <laughs> the Vikings came over. Listen, way earlier. white guys yeah. get all the credit always. Anyways, we're not talking about that. We're talking oh, about the Wraith from 1986. This movie similar yet different. Similar but completely opposite. Uh, this movie on Rotten Tomatoes doesn't have a lot of reviews. There's 12 reviews. Giving it a 33% uh, tomato meter Mm -hmm. for whatever that's worth. Audience score, 62%. Uh, Box office-wise, this movie had a really tiny budget of $2.7 million and goes on to make $3.5 million. So not much return there. Uh, Obviously, critical flop, uh, but... This movie stars, well, directed by a guy, written and directed by Mike Marvin, a guy known for not much else. Mike Marvin directed ski scenes for Hot Dog the Movie and Better Off Dead. He was like the skiing filming guy. Hmm. He was a great ski. Yes, that was his specialty is I can shoot people skiing on mountains. Really cool. And apparently car chases and car races. Uh, Anthony... Yes. You just saw this movie. Yes, right oh, before the show. Okay, wait. We didn't go through who else is in this movie. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, starring top billing Charlie Sheen right before Platoon. He goes off to make Platoon after this movie. And it's funny that he's top billed. He's barely in the movie. Uh, also, we got Nick Cassavetes playing the main bad guy, Packard Walsh. Uh, Cheryl and Fenn. Of Twin Peaks fame, playing the romantic lead girl, Carrie Johnson. Randy Quaid playing Sheriff Loomis. Um, and then Clint Howard. Like we talked about at the beginning. Ron <laughs> Howard's brother, who was like in every fucking shitty 80s movie there ever is. Uh, playing a crazy, over-the-top street gang character. And then just other people uh, you're never going to hear about. You can point out people like Jamie Bozian, who played Gutter Boy. And David Sherrill, who played Skank. We'll get into all these wonderful names, uh, but really, it's Charlie Sheen, Nick Cassavetti, Shelf, and Randy Quaid leading this. Anthony, what the hell is the Wraith about? Ooh, the Wraith is about this thug street racing gang that has a hold of their town, kind of similar to uh, Roadhouse. Roadhouse, yeah, yeah it's up, yeah, it's up a little yeah, bit smaller scale, even yeah. and. They start get mysteriously picked off one by one by some sort of weird supernatural alien type creature. And you find out from there what really happened and why this is happening. Yes, it's uh, what you you're, it would be your 80s sci fi horror revenge teen romance all thrown into one. All in one. Yeah. All in one. And this is the first time you have seen this movie, Anthony. Oh, yeah. Okay. By you, Imran. This is actually another one of these obscure 80s movies that slipped by me. Oh, shit. I've never watched this, and I'm surprised, just like Roadhouse, how did I not see this fucking movie? Uh, so let's start with you, Anthony. Fresh on your mind, a movie yeah. just ended. Uh, opening thoughts on uh, The Wraith. Your notes, um, in terms of comparison movies, is, yeah. is pretty spot on. Yeah. From when I, when I was watching it, I compared it to... 
sort of a Fast and Furious yes. meets The Crow meets RoboCop meets the bad guys from the first scene in Terminator where yeah, yeah. Terminator gets his clothes. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a weird mix of all that because you have the, the return of the dead getting revenge storyline similar to RoboCop or The Crow, but then yeah. you have street racing with Fast and Furious, and then you have stuck in the 80s with all the, the, the music and the way it's shot and boobs and people acting like not real people. Well, um, yeah. This movie was not good. <laughs> and unlike unlike my intro of last week's movie where I described all the reasons why this is not good and yeah. liked it, yeah. this was not good and I didn't like it. Um, there's some decent parts. The, the biggest thing for me is this movie is build with as a charlie sheen movie you mentioned it he's barely in it he's barely in this there movie. really isn't the biggest problem for me is there, this movie's flat it's dry yeah, yeah there really isn't a lead in this movie to latch onto, so you really don't have anyone to follow you're following the bad guy you're following the girl who's not a very good actress being just in love or you're following the, the little brother charlie sheen has no like no charisma in this he's yep. just dry so yep. it's just a flat movie because there's no lead there's, there's no one to follow. There's barely a plot even in the movie. Exactly, yeah. It's just like one thing after another. I mean, the plot another. is a revenge storyline, yeah, but yeah. there's no lead. There, I, there I've never, no I, lead. I don't think I've ever seen a movie without a lead character. Uh, yeah, this movie, for me, having watched it for the first time, uh, I, like an, I, it's an hour passes by, and I'm like, what the fuck is this movie about? Like, what is going on? But yeah, it is a combination of so many... Um, ideas from other movies just thrown together uh, in a low budget. Uh, you know, the car is cool, I guess. You have like a teeny romance John Hughes thing going on at the same time. Uh, cartoony, over the top, Mad Max type bad guys. Uh, and uh, yeah, it reminds me of Knight Rider and The Crow and The Thing and, and a Western. Uh, but uh, yeah. I don't know. This movie was very weird to me. I was like, huh, okay. Rugs, how many times have you seen this, and, and did you see it back in the day? Oh, I saw this movie multiple times. See, if I saw this back in the day in 86 when I was 12, I probably would have fucking been all, all about when it. When I was a kid and we got cable. Yes. Right? Yes. My friends would come over. We'd watch, you know, try and watch R-rated movies and see boobs. Yeah. And this one came on, and a bunch of my friends were into cars because, like, Knight Rider was big. Yep. You know, and uh, the cars were – the car was the coolest – we thought the car was the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. This car that no one ever seen before in real life. Yeah. That went so fast that it, like, outran, like, a, a Firebird or a Corvette. Yeah. We're, like, blown away by that. Because, you know, when you're a car person. Yeah, you know, car like, people must have loved this movie because it's the legit so, cars. Yeah, they had the Dodge Daytona yeah, in there. They yeah. had, like, all these different fucking things. And so the car, number one, w do you remember Street Hawk? Yes, I remember Street Hawk. It also kind of reminded me, like, Auto Man. Remember that show, okay, Auto Man? Okay, so all of that, that's all of that shit yeah. was, like, my shit. Yeah. All of my friend's shit when we were, like, kids. So this movie comes out. No one even knows it's out, right? We don't see this until you go to the video stores on cable. You see this movie on cable, and we're like, holy shit, look at this car. Look at the girl's boobs. Like, that girl's really hot. <laughs> and then that's all we needed. We just needed, right. like, um, uh, something to explode really big. Yeah, which happens a lot. And we needed a car racing and someone winning a race. And that really cool fucking... Uh, RoboCop looking suit with the gun and blowing shit up, and it was you know we everybody knew that this was like not RoboCop. This was not like anything that is close to RoboCop, but it was all of these fucking things mashed together. Yep. Now when I was a kid, I had no idea. I don't know what a good movie was. I just thought, hey, look, this is fucking cool. So I know I had seen it a few times, and then I was like, at, when I got a little bit older, I'm like, oh, I gotta watch this movie again, and um. I had no idea because, like, now this is I'm in my in my twenties. I Twin Peaks had come out. Yep. Uh, Cheryl and Fenn. I never knew. I forgot that she was in this movie. And I was like, "Holy shit!" A young Cheryl and Fenn. Oh shit! Fucking uh, Charlie Sheen is in this. Oh, I know who Clint Howard is now, and all that stuff. I'm like, all these fuck. And this guy fucking directed the Notebook. 
and like was in fucking Face Off yes. with Caster Troy's buddy, yes. the bald guy. Yes, that's why I so, was like trying to figure out where I recognized him. So, um, all of these little things, Randy Quaid and all that stuff was like, uh, then The Crow having the same guy named Skank in it, like all these things started to connect for me when I was in my 20s, you know, yeah. because that's when The Crow came out and it, you know, that. So I was just like, oh, it was nostalgic for me to see. I, but I knew the movie was garbage. Like at that point, I was like, I knew enough to know that this movie is like a complete piece of shit. But it's not even a movie. Yeah. I don't think. <laughs> um, but I have fond memories of it because of seeing it when I was a kid, seeing the cool car, that whole Knight Rider thing. I love Knight Rider. I was, that was, I was so into Knight yeah. Rider when it was on. So, um, yeah. When I was a kid, it was the greatest thing. It's like when uh, this is like almost like when Anthony uh, was talking about Power Rangers. Yep, yep. <laughs> like this was his shit. Yep. This is the fucking shit that he loved. And then he saw it as an older person and was like, "Whoa, this is bad." <laughs> and I still, f- I, I feel like kind of torn. I was like, I know it's bad, and I just, but it has some nostalgia factor for me. So mm. it's uh, I'm not saying it's good at all. But I'm saying that I, when I hear the music and the the fucking bad eighties music coming in, and the, I mean, there was like Ozzy Osbourne Dude, the on the soundtrack. Sound, the soundtrack's wild. You got Robert Palmer, you got Ozzy yeah. Osbourne, uh, you got Motley Crue in there, and it kind of makes the movie. But yeah, it's that car racing, car head eighties fucking cheese. Uh, Sherilyn Fenn is smoking hot in this movie. I was she like, is very good to look. I was at. like, holy fuck, who is this? I was like, oh, Sherilyn Fenn from Twin Peaks, get the fuck out of here. They, yeah. they gave her the most robotic girl part ever. <laughs> And so Anthony, the guy who played Packard Walsh, the guy, he, Nick Cassavetes, goes on to direct The Notebook. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Of all things. And he plays kind of a, a an amazing, over-the-top bad guy, psychopath. I most remember him from Face Off. And Face Off. But yeah, this is a movie where people are just idiots. And even the sheriff is kind of an idiot, and everybody's just making there's dumb no decisions. In this there's movie. no adults. There's barely any cops. They just getting away. I mean, there's a lot of th- Sherilyn Fenn to me was the best part, just to look at. Yes. Um, but I mean, there the fact that what's this, Charlie Sheen is in it, but not really in it, and for whatever reason they they decide to bring back the reincarnated brother as someone that looks similar yet yeah. different. That was it weird. Was like, Wait, why? Why? Yes. yes. Why are they doing this? And I mean, and just the, the the nonsensicalness of, okay, this guy's come back to take revenge for his death, walks into the shop where they're at and decides to just shoot up all their shit instead yeah, of just it's, shooting it's everyone. Just killing them. And then, you know, just random situations where this guy's killing your friends and you're like, I'm going to get him by beating him in a race. <laughs> I'm going to race him. And I'll the, race him this and the, time. So the Wraith has like one trick every time. He does the same thing. Same yet, thing. They continue <laughs> to race him and get killed. Like not idiots. only that, they continue to raise him, but the creativity on these director, this director or writer, is come up with a different way to kill these people. <laughs> Don't just have him always stop in the middle of the road. Yes, he and just they plow through shoots him. ahead and then waits <laughs> until they crash into him, and then magically reappears. And it's never clear whether this is like an alien or is this magic right. or is this. Why a is ghost there pieces car? of him disappearing after? So I yeah. think I like there's braces and tubes. But I think what happens is every time he kills someone, he gets stronger, so he doesn't need the brace. But they don't explain it. They don't explain that. They don't explain why the people die. You think, in this it, weird... you think that he's restoring his own body? Yes. Or something. Yeah, or so, yeah, he's he's getting his life force. But yes, they don't explain why people die so weirdly. Well, the we're, car we're, burns, but they're untouched and their eyes are gone. What right. the fuck was this? I'm not yeah, sure. No one explains that either. <laughs> they're like, he's clean. But in the crow, the yeah. eye, remember the girl with the eyes? She, she takes the eyes out of people. Oh, yeah. And they were. I think, there's a, I think James Obar saw the wraith. Yes. And then he and then fucking wrote so the crow. So I was going to ask how much, because the crow, he writes in 1989 and publishes. How much? There seems to be so many things that he picked up. There's a, the characters' names, like Skank, Gutterboy, Rughead, Augie, Minty. The crow has a character named Skank. He does the same flashbacks in the red light. Uh, it's the same exact fucking story, pretty much. So I don't know how much the, this movie, The Wraith, influenced J.O. Barr writing The Crow. It's the same fucking movie. Yeah. Uh, which is crazy, but I love... Which makes it a little bit cooler, in my in my opinion, yeah. because it, even though it's a shitty movie, there's something that, saw, that he gravitated towards and maybe internally processed that maybe you never saw this movie. Yeah. But I mean, there's too many things... <laughs> There's there's too many there's things too that many are like things that are exactly... too, too many weird things. The the people the 
people sniffing WD forty. Oh and my drinking. god, Skank is drinking hydraulic fluid. Yeah, what? I mean, what? Inhaling <laughs> <laughs> WD forty. The, the, the oh, scene shit. where the scene where Charlie Sheen just r- randomly goes to the girl. They're long, looking longingly each other's eyes. He just goes, "I love you," <laughs> and then just start <laughs> making out. I was like. What the fuck? But it was so predictable because they kept showing you the scars and they kept showing you how he was killed. And I'm like, oh, he's the car. He's the guy. And he's no, also this no guy's shit. He, I mean, they brother. show his face in. They ru- they ruin the, the supposed reveal when yeah. he walks into the shop and the glasses, the, the visor on his mask goes down. You see that it's Charlie oh, Sheen. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. You do see his eyes. You're like, OK, well, it's Charlie Sheen. Now I know that he's back from the dead. And what what's the deal? Like, Charlie Sheen. Or the the brother is a complete asshole. He comes back from the dead, kills all these people, decides not to hang out, not to be in the life of his little brother. And Instead, just, just takes runs away again. with the girl. <laughs> it just takes off with the girl. Yes. I mean, gave I guess car, I would. Yeah, yeah, he, he gave her the car. He gave him the car. He gave him the car with a pussy magnet. Turbo interceptor. I mean, can I get the car with the pussy magnet? <laughs> the way Sherilyn Fenn was looking, <laughs> I guess I would run away with her too. But oh yeah. my god! But like, why did she stay with Packard? Like, she just followed every order. I guess she was threatened. But I'm like, this is you. The writing was great. Like so his dumb. brother yeah. always called him bro. Yeah. And then at the end, he's like, "Who are you, bro?" He's like, "You just said <laughs> you it, just man." Said it. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite line is I think I think Skank and Gutter Boy kind of steal the scenes they're in. They're they're hilarious. Yeah. Uh, Packard was a lot like um Wesley from yeah. from the Roadhouse yeah, where he Red just Wesley. Un, like un, unreasonably just has control over all these people. And no one no one's standing up to this no, bad guy. No, nobody who will just say c- no. controls the entire town for for no, absolutely no reason. When the police finally go to his lair, he's like fucking some chick. Yeah, <laughs> he's fucking some chick, and then they and it looks like they're like she's into it, he's into it. When he takes her away, the girl goes, "Thank you." As if like <laughs> she was getting raped. It's like Wait, yeah. you didn't want to be there. And then you see that girl later on at Kay's or uh, the burger place, and yeah. she's like looking all concerned as the little brother gets beat up. By Jesus. Packard. You know that there's a young Brooke Burke in this as well. Oh, oh. Before Brooke. she got her, yeah, Brooke Burke. Brooke Burke, I remember She's that one name. of the waitresses at, the, at that mm. place. There's no a kidding. lot of boobies in this movie. Oh, I think for, I remember that scene. PG-13. She, she serves burgers and like dips her head into the car. Yeah. She looks great in there, too. That's yeah. what I'm saying. There's a lot of Easter eggs in there's this There's a movie. lot of Easter eggs. Uh, yeah, Charlie Sheen is, I understand he was supposed to be like expressionless, kind of weird, because he's like... A ghost that came back, but like, what were we doing? He doesn't even show up until like halfway through the fucking movie. They have to. Well, set- he shows up in the beginning, but yeah. The, the the big issue for me, this could have been. It. I mean, it is similar to Roadhouse in that it just doesn't make any fucking sense. Yes. It's, the, the writing is bad. Yes. The acting super convenient. Right. Yeah. Super convenient. That the, no one acts like a real person. Yep. But the big problem is, for whatever reason, Roadhouse has that. Machismo, I want to be that guy. It's got factor. Swayze. It's got the Swayze's Swayze factor. Great. Yeah, yeah, you can latch on to Swayze. You don't want to be Charlie. I don't. Other than Bang Bang and Cheryl and Fenn, there's really nothing about Charlie Sheen where you go, yeah, I'd want to be that so, guy. So, fun fact: while they were filming this movie, Johnny Depp was actually dating Cheryl and Fenn. They considered Good pull, him Johnny. Yeah, right at that time, <laughs> fucking 1986, Cheryl and Fenn. But apparently, he hung out on the set all the time. He was in the hotel with them where the hmm. crew was, and he was briefly considered. For this role, and I think Depp would have been great because he does. Oh, play, he would have been ten times. He better. plays these weird, out of fish, out of water characters, and he's just better at that. Well, well, Sheen, they had to shoot this movie like really quick. Twenty-seven days. Wow, so, like yeah. that's ridiculously yes, because he had to do platoon. Nothing, and then he had to go and do platoon. So he was already checked out. They like shortened his scenes and everything. And then a guy got killed doing the stunts. Yes. Oh, wow. A cameraman during one of the stunts was killed, which also, you know, shortened the time they had to work on it. But they had to shoot this thing so quickly uh, for the money they had. So lots of things went wrong yeah. in this film. Um, I don't know. I did like the airport hang uh, graveyard. Oh, yeah, that was that was a yeah. cool well, like, well, little. What did you think of found? the racing scenes and the car stunts? Some of the stunts for the time were kind of impressive. They were kind no, of good I, thought, explosions. I thought when I was a kid and I saw this, yeah. I didn't see anything like it. I mean, racing for pink, pink slips. Like, Pinks. I didn't see that in any yeah, movie. That's like, like old like uh, drag drag racing thing. Yeah. There's that one shot where that car just keeps tumbling down the hill for like four minutes. 
Yeah, that's a little I was excessive. like, it's still tumbling. They did a lot of those insertion jump subliminal message cuts yeah. into, in this film, yeah, what, too, which I didn't know what that, that was, was about. Yeah, yeah that was well, weird. that was kind of new for the time. Like, I don't think a I lot of people sh- were doing that. I expected to see Ch- Tyler Durden's dick. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoa. Uh, the thought I had when that car was going down was, yeah. wow, they bought that car to blow it up. They both blew, blew up all those fucking cars. Yeah. Uh, the car was a Dodge M4S. It was actually a pace car for the Indy 500. The Turbo Interceptor. Turbo Interceptor. So what happens is they got that car. They basically made uh, mock-up versions of them. Yeah, yeah. They have like junk to cars underneath. Yeah. And they blew those up. And they used that. Ju- they only used the Interceptor and in the, in the, maybe that last shot when he gives him the car. Yeah. And maybe in the beginning when you see the beauty shots of it before the... But they didn't, they didn't use it in any of the races. So all of the race cars yeah. were like... Uh, you know, mock-up versions of, of that. We see a large Dodge logo on the hood. Uh, I thought the car was sick. It reminded me, it brought me back to the Knight Rider days, and I yeah. was like, this fucking car is pretty dope. Um, they also, that 1986 had two other big car movies. There was The Hitcher and Maximum Overdrive by Stephen King, which is another movie it kind of reminded me of, because you don't see the driver and, like, the car is the actual... The car is the actual character. It's not Charlie Sheen, you know? Right. That's what they were trying to go for. But uh, I don't think they succeeded. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's not, not a ton. No. There's not a ton there. The, the movie, for whatever reason, it just didn't click with me. I just felt very flat throughout the well, entire this is movie. One of those things that in the 80s, especially if you're making a movie that didn't cost a lot, like no effort was put into the script and the story. They, oh, yeah. they they just expect you to go along with whatever. Like, why is this guy fucking evil? And why is she fucking around him? Why doesn't she go to the police and say something? Like, they, there's none of that's explored. I mean, you got you have to infer, you have to figure out. Okay, maybe she's so afraid of him. Right. Blah blah blah. She's like, a slave, basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it, it's weird, but like, so they just give you a concept and they just expect you to go along with it, not question anything. And I think that like literally anyone could write an 80s movie. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's just take, it's just similar to the roadhouse, which is take an idea. So yeah. a revenge storyline. Yeah. Now let's make the person committing revenge an alien or fantasy character. And let's make the bad guys, this evil racing gang. Yes. And instead of, and, and and the creative way for him to kill them is let's do street races. <laughs> like, it's literally just picking things out of the air. Like, I'll take that. Yes. I'll take that. I'll take that. Let's combine movie. all this shit. Let's, now movie. we have, oh, boobs? Movie. Yes, more boobs. Get it done as quickly we as you can. We need some boobs in this movie. <laughs> and we need some hot 80s tracks. Clint Howard's <laughs> character name is Rughead. And I was like, this, you, Rug, is, you must be related. This has to be a distant relative. <laughs> I think he's like a, an uncle he, of a cousin of I mine. I can see the family resemblance. The hair, the teeth. The teeth definitely. I like that he gets there. off yeah. Scott Free. Yeah, why didn't the Wraith kill him? He had nothing to do with he it. He didn't have anything to do with the murder. He was the he one he there. Yeah, he wanted, to, he wanted no part of it. He was trying and to he's get the out. one who actually told the sheriff everything. And then he had to hightail it out. At one point, the bad guy grabs Sherilyn Fenn yeah. and like just... Wants to go to California and escape because, like, the heat's getting too hot. Yeah. So, and she's like, "I never loved you." And then he cuts his hand and bleeds and puts that's and really then awkward. Feeds her blood, like shoves his blood in her mouth. That's I'm like, so, "What? So weird. What is oh, going on shit. in this movie right now?" I have my AIDS. Oh my god. So <laughs> yes, weird. but uh, yeah, just over the top, cartoony bad guys. There's really not much more you can say about this movie. Um, it's a bad movie. It's a pretty vanilla 80s it's a, it's movie. A, it's it's not even a good bad movie. It teeters more on the bad than I mean it could let's not like, I think that nostalgically yeah. I'm always gonna love this movie. Yeah. It, it, like at not as like thinking it's a good movie. I don't think it's a good movie. But there's always gonna be that little kid who thought that car was the coolest thing yeah. and you know thought the the music, some of the songs were like I great. mean, I thought the soundtrack <laughs> did work uh, so, dating it for the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, I've never when seen a movie like where you're 14 years old and you want to see boobs and cars, boobs and, and cars like, raising I and can explosions. See the appeal. Absolutely. I just, I've never seen a movie without a lead. Yeah, the car was the lead. It was Roadhouse all about the car. Is definitely, the, we just watched Roadhouse yeah. last week, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Roadhouse is definitely like miles above this in just achieving what it set out to do, which is fucking make you 
entertained yeah. and fucking want to watch it a second time. Apparently, though, this has a cult following. It's a guilty it pleasure for a lot of people. And I can see. There's, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people that love the 80s. Yeah. And will watch anything from the 80s. Right. Yeah. So I don't know if they were planning on remaking this. I couldn't find any information. But probably best to not do. Don't remake this movie. Just <laughs> let it lie. All right, well, look, let's rate the fucking picture. Roadhouse, 1986. Anthony. Yeah, Roadhouse. The Wraith. The, the Wraith. Wraiths. Yes, oh, sorry. Wraith. I'm still stuck in last why, week. Why is it called The Wraith again? Uh, because, yeah. well, it's funny that, like, he's a ghost. Rughead knows this character. That one of them even knows the word The Wraith because he's a ghost. Yes. Got it. Apparently, okay. he disappears. Got it. Okay, yes. I Scottish know. word for ghost. Yeah, they don't explain that. what the fuck he is. Got it. Okay. I don't have the nostalgia factor for this. Yeah. So. I'm sure of it at its time if I was Rug Boy's age when he first saw it or Imran's. Well, Imran never saw it. Um, <laughs> yeah. His mom wouldn't let him watch movies no. at the time. Too many boobies. Too many boobies, too <laughs> many of the whites. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm sure I would have I really enjoyed it. Uh, boobs, cars, killing ghosts. Right. Any any 12-year-old would love all that shit. Um, I, unfor- but unfortunately, I didn't watch it at time. I watched it at 2020 as a 32-year-old. <laughs> and... As mentioned, it doesn't have any of the appeal, that machismo, that uh, um, factor of wanting to be the main character for me. It's very flat main character. Charlie Sheen is barely in the movie, and when he is, he's not really doing anything. No one acts like a real person. It's ridiculous. For me, it is a solid (laughs) 3.5. Oh, shit. (laughs) Not as bad as the Power Rangers or Mortal Kombat Annihilation, or even... uh, it, uh, what should we call it? A Rocky Horror Picture. Well, oh. maybe it's that bad. I don't know. Oh wow! Not okay. as bad as those other first. Okay. Those first two, though. Okay, okay, okay. I will go next, and uh, yeah, I don't have a nostalgia factor either, and that's surprising that this movie slipped by me because uh, I was watching all sorts of shit in the '80s, and if I was a kid back then, I probably would have loved it. But you probably would have started snorting WD forty. I'll be like, oh, does then. that work? Let me get some hydraulic fluid. <laughs> Stop totally. drinking that juice. Um, what this movie needed was more throat ripping. Would have vastly approved the movie, yeah. like Roadhouse. But I'm gonna, I'm give it. It's a four. It's a four out of ten. Uh, Rugs, you have a different perspective. What would you give this movie? Yeah, I got a little bit of a nostalgia kick to this, and I have many memories of Sherilyn, young Sherilyn Finn in that red bikini. Oh my god, um, that was the that was the best scene in the movie. And um. <laughs> the awkward kissing that they did yes. is just oh my gosh. hilarious. It's so like, what hilarious. are they doing? They linger on them like making out, and yes. you know, normally There's making so many... the tongues are coming out. Yes, you see the <laughs> tongues, and you're like, it's <laughs> just so many bad Which things way? in this movie. Like, I, if I were to think about it, it'd be like endless amount of just shitty things in this movie. But nostalgia, the fact that they shot it in a month, fucking somebody died making this yeah, film. Yeah, really. Feel bad for that guy dying and making this film. Um, I'm gonna give it a 4.5. Okay, huh? so uh, the nostalgia factor kicks it up half a point. God, even the racing scenes, I'm like, these scenes they were shot well. I'm like, this should be exciting, but like they were fucking boring and repetitive. It was the same shit. I was like, you No, this is like Roadhouse for, for some reason overcame. All of that. Dalton is the best. Because it still holds up Does. as an entertaining film. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, there's just that. Anthony said it the best. There's just no main character yeah. for you to really latch on to. I'm surprised that I'm like, oh, Charlie Sheen gets top building. He barely does anything. What the fuck? Is he even in the Wraith costume? Probably not. It was, that was the biggest disappointment is having Charlie Sheen there thinking, oh, 80s Charlie Sheen. He's going to be an action star in this, and he's not the action star. Well, you can star. see with The Crow, you can make this type of movie and have a main character that is yeah, absolutely. you gravitate yep. toward. But see, so whether Obar you know, used personal tragedy and this subtly like informed the structure, I don't know. But it's so fucking similar uh, that he must have seen it. Charlie Sheen, also in 86, huge year for him. Not only Platoon, but he had that um, cameo in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So he right. was in the police station. So he was uh, on his way up. Then he does Wall Street the next year and Young Guns and then Major League uh, before he's Mr. Tiger Blood winning crazy motherfucker. 
What's your favorite Charlie Sheen movie? Ho- Remember Hot Shots? That was a great movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Platoon is good. He's good in Platoon. Hot Shots Part Two. <laughs> part D. Part D. I don't know. Do you, do you have a favorite Charlie Sheen movie? Major League? Nope. Men at Work? Remember Men at Work? It's a fun one. Was he in Navy SEALs or something? He was in Navy SEALs, which was another action movie. Like, these were all trying to make him, like, this action star, but then he was doing these comedy movies Be- also. Then he realized that comedy was more his yeah. thing. Yeah. I don't, I don't have a favorite Charlie Sheen movie. Yeah, I couldn't really. Yeah, I'm not really a Charlie oh, Sheen yeah. type of guy. Nope. I mean, I, his ensemble shit, when he's in ensemble with other Major people. Major League is probably his most iconic role, I would yeah. say. Honestly, I've always liked Emilio Estevez better. I always thought he was the better brother. I actually enjoy him. Emilio Estevez. Man at work. Yeah. <laughs> that was with Emilio. Emilio's Emilio great. Estevez has a special place in my heart because the Mighty Ducks films are uh, some of my favorite films as a kid. There you go. Yeah. Coach Bombay. Yeah. Yeah, no, Emilio had some great movies in the 80s and Young Guns and all that shit he did. I used to love all that. So, and I was like, eh, Charlie Sheen, you're trying. Good for you. Yo, he's got the tiger blood. He's got the tiger blood. All right. Well, thank you, Ray O'Neill, for picking this film and forcing us to watch it. I'm glad I watched this obscure 80s movie because I, 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 I didn't, I don't know how it got past me. And now I've experienced the wraith and that's enough. I can move on with my life. <laughs> the poster, I put a, a graphic of the poster. It's so badass. It looks so sick. It's another example of. Like Masters of the Universe, great poster, completely misleading, shitty movie. This poster is yeah. fucking awesome. You're like, this could be a sick sci-fi movie if it looks anything like this poster. And what is this? Is this an alien? Is yeah. this a fucking Terminator? What is it? Robocop? It's everything. It's everything. It's everything smushed together and not really done well on a low budget. So yeah. there you go. All right, let's get into news from the nation. <laughs> It's time for news from the nation. It's time for news from the nation. I will have you know, listeners, all fart work is done live on the show. Oh, shit. It's not a recording. It's my anus. It's uh, Rug Boy's slack hole. Wowie zowie. Uh, live, live f- flatulence work done by Rug Boy. Uh, this is the part of the show where I grab some stuff from our Facebook group, Jock and Her Nation, and uh, share it with everyone. Blake Braden posted a link to an article uh, titled Stranger Things Will End After a Two-Part Season 4. With the comment, what does the nation think? Reasons for a Season 4 series finale cast too busy i thought this was the show that had stability and was set for long term on the platform i have nothing else on netflix that i really watch anymore um what do you guys think i think four seasons of stranger things is enough uh these kids well, these kids are growing old just uh you got four good stories we got lock and key coming out lock and key will be out on sunday i believe so the seventh uh, or check tomorrow. it out blake yeah which is that um, is an adaptation of a comic book written by joe hill Stephen King's Stephen son. King's son, correct. Pretty cool. Yes. Um, I read it. It's pretty so, cool. Um, Stranger Things. Uh, I felt like it should have been ended already. Yeah, probably should have ended the last season. So uh, I don't think it. I think it's too early. I think that this is perfectly timed. They should really just go out and hopefully up the ante a little bit from last time, but stop digging a hole for themselves and trying to top what they did last time and just kind of end it. I like ending things before they fucking suck. Before they get oh. stale. I mean, I thought yeah. uh, wrapped up things pretty good uh, at the end of season three. Anthony, I know you don't watch the Stranger Things. Yeah. No. Okay. I but, have not seen one episode. You know, and with the state of Netflix with these shortened series, do you think Netflix will ever have something that's going to last for seven, eight, nine, ten seasons? Or is it smarter just to do these smart, these shorter, good seasons of things and then throw something else out there? Meaning they don't really have... Like a I consistent think, flagship dealie. I think they will. I mean, I think if they find something that can last a while and, and they have a, a story that can keep going and fans are interested, they'll, they'll, they'll keep going with I mean, it. They, like, they, they just say, haven't found that thing. Is it? Could it be The Witcher? Will there be seven I, seasons of The Witcher? You guys can answer that. I have no, no I clue. Know, fucking, Didn't they talk about doing a lot of seasons? Yes. They said yeah. they wanted to do like seven seasons and they have story for seven seasons. Seems like a lot. I don't know. As far as nothing else to watch on Netflix, I've been watching something uh, just recently. It's a nature documentary series called Night on Earth. 
and it's all about what happens in different environments in pitch black darkness. They have these special low light cameras that they are able to capture shit no one has ever seen in complete darkness. It's pretty fucking dope. Neat. Like what? <laughs> uh, w- well, they like in the jungle, in the forest tundra. There's an episode that shows you cities. How many animals around the world have to go into cities to find food? And we're talking everything from fucking elephants to leopards, uh, you know, to little mice. Uh, and then there's one just about surviving the night. Uh, but there's they've shown to me like creatures that no one's ever seen because they only come out at night. Uh, bat migrations on the low light camera, night camera shit is really compelling. Um, so it's it's a pretty fucking sick documentary. Cool. Rugs, have you watched anything on Netflix that you like lately? No, but I did watch GI Joe the motion picture, oh, the, the animated the one. cartoon from the eighties. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> does that still hold up? No, but like I I enjoyed the shit out of it. I mean, like I kind of tune out here and there, yeah. and then I just like kind of dial back in when there's certain things happening, yeah. but. I just wanted to watch it just to see like what that was. And that it that movie is is totally like we're gonna introduce you to a bunch of new toys that you need to buy. Yes, buy all is that on Netflix? <laughs> no, I saw it on a bootleg. That Snake Eyes movie is coming out apparently, I guess, with uh but Henry Golding as Snake Eyes. You know what though? The even though the, the movie was kind of like weird, it's still better than a lot of the shit that's out there now, like these cartoons. Yeah. Like they get right to it. You know, I mean it's eight Again, it's like that 80s style thing where they just tell you that something's happening. You just got to go they along with it. drop you right but, into the action. But um, it's still, they have characters at least. Like Duke is a character. is a real fleshed out character. Then his, his, um, his half brother, the Falcon, is, he's a fucking character. People actually and die it, and shit. You well, know, yeah, One. Duke yeah. almost died. Well, he doesn't die? I, th- I always thought he died. Serpentor's there. Like, the, my favorite thing about this is... Is that Cobra Commander yeah. just like they fucking ever since Sip- Serpentor is, was was he made Serpentor yeah. and he usurped him. And now everybody just fucking shits on a Cobra Commander, like including Destro, who always shat on him since the beginning. He was, was always, always he was the butt him. of everyone's joke, wasn't he? Yeah. Cobra Commander. So, Never catch a break. It's just Destro. It, yeah, he just gets turned into a snake. So, I um, had that action figure. I love my Serpentor action figure. It came with a little skiff he wrote on and shit. It's great. Yeah, I had that. That was a badass. But like, it was a nice little uh, jaunt down memory lane. Uh, you know, it's not. Is it? Is it a great film? No, but I think it's definitely fun to just watch for a little bit. Well, speaking of movies that aren't great but are fun, uh, Michael Cherkowski posted a link to the Fast and Furious Nine trailer. Yes. Posting this comment when Fast Five came out, I made a joke post that Burt Reynolds was going to show up as Paul Walker's dad in the movie. Yes, I know. Both of them dudes is dead now. They weren't in 2011, so shut up. A friend at work saw my post, misunderstood it was a joke, and told people Burt Reynolds was in the movie. Uh, Rugs, it's kind of like your Batman John Belushi story. <laughs> John Belushi's not Batman. But, uh, Anthony, <laughs> you're the, the franchise Fast and Furious guy, right? Sort of. I didn't see the last one. You didn't see the last one, but you've seen majority I am of them. A little, and I didn't see Hobbs and Shaw. I'm a little fatigued on the Fast and Furious, but yes, for the most part, I've enjoyed these movies. So nine and ten are coming out back to back. One, uh, yeah, I think ten's coming out next year. What did you think of this uh, trailer for FF Nine? Nothing will surprise me with <laughs> FF, but there are two things that slightly did. Okay, the stunts are as ridiculous as they as they always They're are. Insane looking. Uh, this one now has John Cena in oh. it, and he is Vin Diesel's long lost evil brother. Yeah, because they look alike, of course. Yeah, right. Yeah, they're which com- they can see never that. has been oh, talked about in these his movies. Brother. Yeah, now it's his brother, which is, and he'll probably by the end end up teaming up with Vin Diesel. They really just need to make a movie where it's him, Vin Diesel, John Cena, The Rock, and Jason Statham in a oh, four way match. That for, would be sick. Four way ladder match for the undisputed car title. Um, <laughs> The other thing that surprised me is is now they're doing this thing. So at the end of, uh, I believe it's might be part six. Yeah. I lose track of these. Well, in part three, Tokyo Drift, the character by the name of Han, yeah. played by, I forget who who's plays him, uh, is killed. Okay. At, at, in six, they hint to the, or they tell you that it's Jason Statham that kills him. Okay. The tag in this trailer is Han walks in. Yes, I didn't understand this. So, I, yes. unless they have Infinity Stones or he was never dead, 
that makes no goddamn Did sense. Did you see whatsoever. his body in the in when he died? Like was he you, dead? You dead? see his car turned over with him in it, and then the guy rams it, and there's an explosion or something, something along those so lines. So what? He's been in a coma for the past fucking eight years. It makes no sense. But <laughs> this is Fast and Furious. That so. was oh, apparently that was the big oh shit oh Hans back, yeah. and I was like, someone has to explain this to me. But this fucking stunt where it's the cable and. The helicopter off the cliff? What the <laughs> fuck is going on here? Nothing surprises Looks me. Looks fucking amazing. Sung Kang is the next Sung name. Sung Kang. So, yeah. yeah, everyone lost their shit because they were like, hey, Han is back and it's not Han Solo. Rugs, comment on this trailer? <laughs> oh, my God. This looks beyond. Uh, I don't even know if I can. <laughs> they're going to keep making these it's, movies. It's Roadhouse, baby. Th- yeah, for the new this, era. This is <laughs> Nine like, of them. We just talk about car porn and the rain. <laughs> when, you, when you think about <laughs> how like you have to suspend disbelief to watch Roadhouse? Yeah, like he's literally swinging his car like Spider Man yes. through the jungle. <laughs> it's a Spider Mobile. Oh shit! I was like um, what is going, going on? across bridges? In uh, there is no f- the the physics are completely irrelevant. Dude, they put a jet engine on the car also, and a Fiero. And a Fiero. I mean, oh, that's th- this a Fiero. Is, th- this is this is just the tip of the ice. I mean, they've done parachutes on yeah, cars. Yeah. They've they've had. Uh, the Rock break out of a cast by just flexing. They've had Vin Diesel <laughs> break a rooftop by just punching the ground really hard uh, as an earthquake no. is happening. I this mean, they had so many things. It's a movie. It's a comic book movie. Yeah, it's it's not real. They did the car. The, the jumping. Not, I mean, it, it, by not real, I mean it. They really just don't care. There's a fucking stealth bomber in this movie for some reason. Why? How is this? Charlie oh, Theron's flying everything. a stealth bomber. The, and she the, catches the, the car. The thing with these movies is they they. They've gone gotten so ridiculous that they just try to top their ridiculousness with another movie. Unbelievable. I don't think I've watched one of these all the way through. I may just want to watch the stunts. There's the one where they have where they're on the plane and they're like fighting yep. on the as the plane's trying to take off. Yeah. And it's just it's just going on forever. <laughs> yeah, it was the longest cool. runway that you could ever ah. imagine. The scene lasted twenty minutes, and the plane was moving the entire time, down yeah. full speed down a run. It had been like still on the the, I think the math on it was this runway had to have been like twenty five miles long. <laughs> <It's> the <laughs> longest <laughs> runway ever. It's like I, I'm like, why are they doing this? Like, I mean, I guess you have to just not give a fuck. Like, yeah, you're I like, mean, you got to go in there. They were like, able to slow down the runway by shooting spears off of cars into the flaps. Oh, of course. And, had three cars dragging the the plane. Oh, they were pulling off. it. But oh my yeah. god! Wow, wow! Look, it's fun, fucking batshit crazy action. There's something about John Cena. I read another article where the director was like, he's really good at improv. This John Cena, and I think he's a, uh, he's a pretty yeah, decent he's actor. He's not a bad actor. He was. I saw so, Bumblebee. He was pretty good at that. From what I heard, that um, is uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson yeah. and Vin Diesel don't like each other. Oh, do they really not get along? Really? They. I've heard that they 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 couldn't even be on set together. Oh shit! Wow. And then they, they interviewed uh, The Rock and about Vin Diesel, and he said, uh, "I don't have any ill will ter- towards him." And they said, "You know what? Scratch that. I do have ill will towards him." Hmm. So or something something to that effect. Um. So I I don't know if they're going to be on screen together or how it works or whatever. Like the last time they did a movie together, they had like cut assemble edits, so they looked like they were together when wow. they weren't. Um, money talks. Sure, but what could have happened that two grown men wouldn't be able to fucking like? Uh, it's got to be like, egos, right? Vin Diesel probably something along the lines of like the Rock. Vin Diesel over, going Rock overshadows Diesel, overshadowing me or something like that. Is the Rock in this? No, in nine, he's so. not in nine. I don't think no. so. That's why they gave him a spinoff. Oh, this is Justin Lin directing, so. He's bad. He's the best director. Yeah, of these he movies. can do all the crazy fucking stunts. Michelle Rodriguez, John Cena, Vin Diesel, Charlize Theron, Amber Sienna. Yeah, I mean they they, they this movie. Helen Mirren. Why is Helen Mirren in these? They movies? just put the everyone, fuck? all the act- <clears throat> every actor actress is now they have to be in a fast movie, just like Marvel. I mean, Charlize Theron is in this. Didn't Michael they have, uh... Rooker and Cardi B are in this movie. Yeah, I mean the 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 previous ones had a uh, dude that played. Um, the bad guy in Guardians 2. What's his name? Oh, uh, Kurt, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell was yeah, in I mean, the last one. They've had so many big names in these movies. Yeah, I probably won't go see this either, but <laughs> I just. You think Gal Gadot will come back? Oh, she, she was died. in it too. She oh, died. Well, in so it, did Han. She, so that's right. Fucking bring her back. I'm done with Wonder Woman. I'll come back to do Fast 10. But I think they're only doing one more, apparently. And then, I don't know, maybe that's it. I heard that. What they want to do is to capitalize on, you know, the whole woke thing is 
do an all girl ah, mm, Fast and ah, Furious. Ah, that always works. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, yeah. Chuck B- uh, yes. Ghostbusters for how yes. that goes. That's a good idea. Although, Steve. although, well, never mind. I was gonna say Fast and no, Furious I doesn't. Think it's it's organic to this franchise, yeah. though. There are a bunch of kick-ass there are a bunch girls. Of girls. You got Michelle Rodriguez. Just add more. You got Michelle Charlize Theron. And, well, not only that. Uh, what's her name? Mia Tore- Jordana Brewster. Jordana Brewster. Yeah. Oh, Jordana Brewster is in this. Yes. I think what they're going to do is they're going to give them a, a couple of big action scenes. That's why I think Gal Gadot should come back because they gave her a bunch of action scenes. And they had the girl that uh, Game of Thrones. It's in it too. Yeah the the girl I forgot what her freaking name is. I'll look it up. Uh, so that's the one I watched. The one with Gal Gadot in it. What? Which one was that? I think was, she's been in like three or four. Oh, uh, okay. So it was one of those. Yeah, I've seen most of, but I've not sit down. Yeah, Natalia and Thor, em- Emmanuel. Ah, and Thor's wife is also. Uh, was uh, uh, she was she's from the Fast and Furious movies. She was like uh, one of the. She was like the, uh, I guess, a, a policewoman or something that was working with them. Oh, yeah, with- yeah, 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 yeah. I think she gets killed in one of the movies. Does she? Yeah. Um, the Brazilian actress. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You got to have Ludacris and Tyrese Gibson, though. They actually, not even joking, those two actually make the films really funny. Tyrese is actually really funny throughout all these films. And so is Ludacris, actually. They're, they're both very good co- comedic relief. That last one where. Dominic went bad. Didn't see that. Yeah. That was just terrible. Wait, so <laughs> is, he, is he good again? Did he come back? Nobody yeah, knows. He's good like, again. Which he's one good. is the best one, do you think? Fast uh, Five is Fast the best five? one. Fast yeah. Five? Okay, so that was going to... That's, that's the Rock's debut in it. If I only wanted to just watch one Fast and Furious movie, you would recommend Fast Five. Fa- yeah, Fast Five. It, it also has very ridiculous scene, but it's so fucking entertaining because yeah. there's just so much destruction. It's the two cars... Pulling a bank vault throughout <laughs> yeah. the streets of Rio. It, okay. It's so ridiculous, but so well done. That, Which one is Fast and Furious? Is that the one before Fast Five? That's the first uh, one. Well, there's Fast and the Furious, and then Fast and Furious is the one before Fast Five. So that's part four. Part six is good, too. Fast and Furious part six. I don't know what it's yeah, called. Yeah, those two are okay. Um, and then it just gets redonkulous <laughs> after that. Yeah, I would watch yeah. Hobbs and Shaw. That looks kind of fun. I saw it. Hobbs and Shaw. You did. They had, uh, then in one of them, they had Ong Box character. Yes, Tony Jaa. Tony Jaa was in. Oh wow! Yeah, Fast and Furious Seven. It's fucking seven. It's There's gonna minutes. be ten of these. It's nine. Had Digimon Hansu in that one oh, too. Oh, Digimon Hansu was in this. Digimon. Digi- Ronda Rousey was in. <laughs> Digimon. That. Digimon. Yeah. Digimon. Did you mean Digimon? Yeah, she was in one too. Elsa Pataki is that girl. Luke Evans was in these. They could make 20 more if they wanted, I suppose, but they're going to stop at 10. Jesus Christ. Anyways, yes. Check it out. The movie comes out later. I don't know. Check out the trailer. Uh, uh, well, the funny thing about these movies, yeah. one quick thing, is yeah. you watch the first one, and it's it's Point Break, right? Yeah. It's Point Break point with Break's great LA movie. Underground yeah. racing scene. Yeah. It's actually kind of a realistic movie. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Rob Cohen, yeah. Right, and then you just go from there to what it's become, and you, you would never thought, <laughs> never ever thought that this was where it would go. <laughs> They're being chased by a submarine on the ice. What's well, going Justin on? Well, Justin Lin came into the picture, yeah. right. and made that it was crazy. it. He blew it up, yeah. yeah. He made he the, he realized, to his credit, him and the writers of the, of 4 and 5 realized these movies just can't be about racing. Yeah, it just get- it not only it can't only be about racing. Yeah. Yeah, nobody just cares about racing. Right. They have to be like doing some kind of crazy fucking right. superhero exactly. shit. Exactly. I mean, and the stunts are nuts. So, you know, if you're just going to be unabashedly over the top and crazy, that that do it right and uh, make it entertaining. Yeah. And that's what it looks like. There you go. Coming soon to a theater near you. Uh, that's the show, gang. Uh, one announcement, uh, same announcement at the end of every show. Give us Apple Podcast ratings if you have an iOS device. And you are in the U.S. We're up to 111 ratings now. Nice. One, one, one. one. Once we get to 200, we can can make a wish. That doesn't make anything. Well, that's like the time. You can make a wish. 111 ratings, make a wish. But we're trying to get to 200 so we can be official Rotten Tomatoes reviewers. It's the magic number. Help us get there. And uh, we'll submit our review for the Wraith and say it was a four out of ten. What do we have left? Uh, the next movie in round one left is Brightburn. Oh. But next week we will be reviewing Birds of Prey, and then maybe we'll do Brightburn after that, and that's finally where it's a it's a newer movie. And do we have anything else on the on the docket for the new 
next. Oh, we level. have a whole bunch of uh, round two picks. Yes. Oh, there is. Yes. You want to read a couple of them off? The, well, I think some of the exciting ones are <laughs> for uh, our patron saint of awesome, Seth Morgan, wh- has picked uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, good movie. Live, Die, Repeat with Tom Cruise. Great fucking movie. Let's see. Some of the other second round movies. We got Raising Arizona. Pit, oh, shit. Pitch Black. Okay. Kingsman. Big Trouble in Little China. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Condor Man from 1981. Oh. Don't forget Wolf Cop. Oh, shit. That's the worst one. Wolf Cop from Canada. Uh, and need, I thought, that, I thought, I thought you was, changed yeah, it. I thought they were changing that one. Well, I have also written here uh, Goonies. Yeah, slash Goonies. We're, doing. we're doing Goonies. Really? I kind of want to watch Wolf Cop. Maybe we'll do Goonies. Uh, there's also 12 Monkeys or Looper. Jose Ibarra has given the choice. They're both time travel movies. Let's do Looper. Okay. This, is a, this is a much better slate. Yeah, so far, uh, better quality movies. Big Hero 6, Matthew Lawrence wants, which is much a, Much better movie. slate. I'm already much... I've seen a these. lot of these already. Yeah. The I haven't seen probably any of these. All right. Well, we're going to start fucking watching them. And they are. It's a better slate of movies. We got through the really shitty ones, which is, I guess, it's a benefit for us. We got the can't pick. It can never be as bad as Mr. Nanny. Uh, probably. That's true. Don't say that. They can right. make us watch yeah. Showgirls. Wolf Cop. That's all I got. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's uh, that's coming up. So subscribe to the show. We'll, and then if you guys sign up for $10 a month. You can add to this list and force us to add, watch and review any movie on our Patreon. That's about it. Rugs, where can the listener find you? You can find me on Twitter at ReallyRugBoy. Come follow. Check out the show notes for this episode, jockandnerd.com slash 313 for links to everything we talked about, how to get in touch, how to support, subscribe, all the fun stuff. Share the show like Ray O'Neill does. Post it to your Facebook. It's one click. It's painless. Uh, it takes no time. Post it on Twitter. Spread the word. Spread the geekery. Spread Rugboy's slack hole. Yeah, if you don't follow me, you're an idiot. Yes. You gotta follow me. I'll be an idiot like Skank and Gutter Boy (laughs) and Minty and Augie. I'm insulting all of you non-followers. Follow Rugs on Twitter and spread the geekery. Thanks. It's a threat. Thanks for listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the Jock. He's the nerd. We'll peep you next time. That's what I'm going to do. After watching two movies of men bully people, I'm just going to bully people and get what I want. Like Ben Gazzara. <laughs> Fuck that show. I'm going to be nice. Just be nice.